What does everyone think about today? Hey, were we robbed or what? Were we robbed at the end? Were we robbed? I, I couldn't believe it. I really couldn't believe it. Yet, we were brilliant this afternoon. Absolutely brilliant. We started off a little bit iffy. But then we started to come back into the game. They scored. I think Keller should have had that, to be honest. I don't want to criticise the lads. But, um, you know, we should have done better, put it that way. Should have done better. And the commentators were saying um, it reminds of them, get onto this, of the thank goal against Barca. You know, the corner that is. I thought, oh, sods off. Behave. Anyway, I'm just going to uh, I'm gonna bring in the lads. I'm going to go on to these. Drunk Vigo, I can't lie, bro. That was a disappointing result. Yep. That was a must-win game. I don't know so much. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be discussing that. We will be discussing that. You know, like, was it a must-win game? I don't believe it was, to be honest. That's just me. I'll give you my reason a little bit later. Uh Brilliant atmosphere performance from the Reds today, says Ian McHale. Just a final finish lacking, but what a second half from us. Quonsa, outstanding. We are right in the mix for the title. Yes, for the title. Absolutely. Absolutely, Ian. Good evening, Frankie boy. <laughs> of pints and everything else. And the yeah, yes, yeah, there's a loads of points and scotch for you as well. And Ian says, uh, Defo a penalty. I'll be asking the lads about this when I bring them on. And you as well, you know. You as well, I'll be asking. Uh, Klopp, on this, on, Klopp on this team failed to win the biggest games in the Prem. Well, says uh, Dunfigo. Well, you know, yeah, we, we we haven't done so well uh, this season, unfortunately. But look where we are. We're second. Well, top. You know, goal difference, that's all. But we're still top. And we've got it easier than me. That's what I'll say. Paul Turner, even a Friday performance. But yes, we were fantastic. But that challenge on McAllister by Doku, if that was anywhere anywhere else on the pitch that would have been a foul totally agree totally agree this is why Klopp doesn't have three Premier League titles so he's drunk um, I think we battered them second half and once again officials robbed us apart from Sabozlai the team was great and uh, Arsenal have one more win than Liverpool, says Drum. And uh, I was in King Kenny Stan's atmosphere was electric. Cannot believe Luke misses, says the Anfield Raw. Keep it real. Big up by uh, everybody. And um, <laughs> Drunk says Arsenal goal difference is 46 to Liverpool's 13. Okay, I'm going to bring in the, all the boys at once now, okay? Uh, JK, Daryl, and Lee. Hi, boys. Hiya. Hi, Frank. So you know what's the game, right? You know what's the game. I'm going straight to JK here. Was you uh, biting your nails at the end there for the penalty, JK? <laughs> I was waiting for the winner, you know, like we normally do. But um, I think we could have lost that game, we could have won that game, and we ended up getting a draw. So City could have got three points on us today. So equal shares. I'm not really happy, happy with it, but I think Diaz had the chance to win that game for us today. Um, 
I'll still take that point. You know, if we lost that game and Arsenal won and they won, that would be a bad day at the office. So, Arsenal winning, us and City getting a point each is sort of okay out of the situation. It could have been worse, but it should have been better. Yeah. What about you, Lee? Yeah, Lucho has a couple of good chances. I don't want to go too mad on him. Like, I was moaning at the telly, shouting at the telly as usual, like, and, um, and the penalty at the end, the scream penalty so loud they could hear it in China, probably. Like, but, um, like you said, um, it was that um, whole thing of he got the ball slightly first or something like before he kicked, kicked McAllister square in the chest, like. So, well, to be honest, uh, I screams as well, and they could hear us on the Russian front line. <laughs> I screamed, so it was a penalty, definitely a penalty. And if Daryl, I, I, to be honest, I feel like I feel like my cat's just died. <laughs> <laughs> I just I, I don't know what's, I don't know what's I don't know what's going on with referees decisions these days anymore. It's just the, the game itself. Second half we we should have blown them out of sight. We were superb second half. Um, well, well, what can you say about my caster again and Quanza? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, Daryl. And the thing is. With that uh, incident, you know the penalty incident, not the one we got, but the you know the one that wasn't given. I said to myself, now if that would have been the opposite ends of the field in the area, what would have happened? And I'll go to you, Lee. What would have happened? Do you reckon that city was a got it? And then, then right you now, go, the hang on a minute. Lee. You, you talk about because I'm just going to go out here for a minute. Then you, Lee. Then you, JK, after uh, after Lee finishes. Yeah, if that was at the opposite end and one of our players, say, Gomez or one of our attackers, because it was Dockham, you know that was getting given, don't you? That was getting given if it happened at the other end. Like, I've got no, no doubt in my mind that that was been given at the other end. I've never liked Oliver. I don't like any of the refs. I think they're all horrible, the refs. Like, I think they're all horrible and they're all rubbish as well. Uh, a lot of them are crooked, in my opinion. But, you know, we've just got to live with it. At least we're, um, you know, top, top minus that bit of goal difference. But Arsenal have got to play them, haven't they? So, we'll see. Daryl? Um, yeah, as, as Lee just said... City, City got to play Arsenal the next game, and they we've got we've got Brighton at home, Sheffield United at home, two home games, next two games. That goal difference is going to be pegged right back, isn't it? As the next two games, the goal difference is going to be pretty much level by the time we've played them two at Anfield. So I got, I got no worries. That in a bad point today. That's not a bad point today for me. You just played the best team in the Premier League. You just played the best team in the Premier League. So, I think I'm we're the best team. I think we're the best team. Well, no, apart from us, they are they are our, our biggest challenges. I don't think. I think Arsenal will fall oh, yeah, off. Yeah, our biggest rivals. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy with it, Frank. I'm happy with the point. We're the best team because we haven't cheated to get where we've got. Exactly. Has, it's not Klopp. It's not Pep Guardiola hasn't cheated. Like, but I mean, we've known since. I think how long have we known now that they've been cheating financially? The financial. Guardiola has asked for those players he got me. Guardiola's gone like that to the owners. I want him. 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 And he's got them all. He must have known what was going on. So I, I, I can't say that. I, I can't really leave him out of all this. Hundred and thirty-five charges against them. I really can't. I'm being honest. Anyway, uh, go ahead, JK. Yeah, I'm just saying it. Looking at it on paper, um, there's chances we've had to actually win that game. Yeah, should have won it, but City got to beat Arsenal. That's a big, it's a big, uh, it's a, that's a big thing there. 
Uh, we've got Brighton and Sheffield United, as Daryl was just saying. And um, City Arsenal game is for us. We can't really. A draw there would be just sorted. Like today, what we had, a draw there for us is the better thing. So I'm just happy we've got two home games now coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the, the, this is it, you see. We've got two home games which on paper we should win and win in a counter. See what I mean? And as Daryl said, you know, we could easily pull that goal difference back. We could easily do it. Right, I'm just going to read out some of these uh, comments. And we'll start off with uh, Keep It Real. What's you on a TV show, lad? Question, did you end up pulling that day? Yeah, I had my fan club there. All oh, fellas, no, unfortunately. <laughs> wasn't, wasn't Tracy Neville there? No. <laughs> oh, stop it. No, stop it. <laughs> I'm feeling all right. IJK, Daryl Lee, and look at all those pints for you. Sam, bro. There's a saying, isn't that the features the word barge pole? And that comes rare into play when you see Tracy Neville. Can, can I go through the uh, comments, please? Diaz ran himself in the ground. He had a great game, but he should have took one of those chances. I was talking to my daughter, Francine, and she said, Dad, he's taking over the money role. And I said, yeah. And, and I knew what he was going to say. Do you think Mane would have scored one of those chances? I said, yeah. She said, I know. He would have scored the both of them, to be honest. That's what she said. Um, Diaz, yeah, and so Paul Turner's right there. He did. I've, I've always said Diaz frightens teams. He really does. He gets at them. He, he's direct. He runs at them. Anyway, hit them, hit, hit them likes for Frank and the lads. Says Anfield Raw. Thank you. If I'm honest Thank about you. Luke Joe to, to, uh, today and other days, it's not so much his, his finish, it's his first touch. His first touch lets him down so often when he's played through and he's trying to get it like from behind him. And also, um, sometimes the balls aren't played in front of him. Sobersley has a great chance to put it in front of him, like so he could run him, but he put he had to check and go back on it, like you know what I mean. Can I finish off with these uh comments, please? Lee? You don't mind, hey. Uh, keep it there. Liverpool should be about at least six points clear of uh, Arsenal and City. It's disgusting, these two sessions. We'll talk about that. That's a very good comment. McAllister and Enzo dominated the middle. The best midfielders in the league, says Jean-Fierre Rowe. And don't forget, Jean-Fierre Rowe goes there, goes the game. Sally got fouled by Walker and we didn't get a free kick, says Paul Turner. Yes. Uh I was sitting in my seat today watching Walker four times crunch tackle poorly and no caution. Yes, I totally agree there. I totally agree. Nothing. No caution. No nothing. If he was to got a um, yellow, he would have kept a little bit more quiet than what he was. Great performance. You forget how many players are out injured, says Kevin Letts. Absolutely, Kevin. Uh, Anfield, uh, Anfield, uh, Paul Turner, the Diaz misses shocked me. I wish it was Sally. Yeah, I'm going to ask you, uh, actually, everyone as well. Just let me go through these, lads, please. Uh, you guys are nice, but too, too much loser talk. Us? You guys are nice, but too much loser <laughs> Lose at all, at all. Was you agree with what? Was you agree with? I'm gonna say. Was you agree with what the drunk said there? You no, guys personally, like personally, Frank. The neg the negativity from him just bothers me all the time. 
Right, this game needed to be won. That's what drunk says. So should have gonna woulda. Uh, like this, bro. Like I understand where drunk's coming from because uh, I think we should have won that game. But yeah. you know what it is. I just I don't want to keep on going on about it because I just feel that the way the games are coming, we've got two games at home and then Arsenal City play is today could have been worse. That uh, what's his name? Doctor hit the post at the end. Yeah. So that's why I'm I'm just looking at it like that. But at the end of the day, we're winners. Liverpool are the best team in the city, country. Europe wise, everything, we're the best, you know. Um some fans just handle it different. You know, but hundred percent we should have won today. Okay. But Arsenal away to Spurs when they play Spurs. Yeah, yeah, yeah they both are uh, Arsenal and City are both away to Spurs. Good. Good. Spurs doing all right. Spurs doing all right, one defeat in eight. Um, They've got a big say in this run. To give yeah. Villa a thrashing, we've got them today. Villa, yeah, I, I had a funny feeling about Villa a few months ago that one day they're going to just start losing games, and they've lost a few games. They lost to Newcastle at home as well, didn't they? Yeah, and also J.K. Also J.K. Lee, Frank. People got to think. We've still got. We had twelve first team players still missing today. Yeah. People got to see that. Best. Yes, that was City's best. They just didn't have, didn't have Grealish. Yeah, we didn't have exactly. Trent, Yota, we Salah even, he came on a sub. Uh, a lot of guys missing, you know. So, we did well. But considering that, we should have still won the game today. That second half, we were amazing. Um, the, the fans stood up today, you know. So, all in all, we should have won the game, but we didn't. Could have lost the game. And we'd be even crying even more then. Okay, let me go through these boys, please. Uh, people give City so much adulation, but it's time to say our reserves battered City's full strength side. Yes. Good shout down for you, though. Paul Taylor has shocked me as well. Uh, Salah or Nunes, I think one of those would have tucked it away. Just imagine if Jota was the captain. <laughs> You know, don't forget he's out in you. Don't forget Ali's out in you as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Paul Turner, uh, Paul Turner was unusual. We didn't finish them off, but enjoyable. Just not the points. Absolutely. TW. Uh, even in golf, feels like a defeat tonight, but lots of positives. So we go again. Absolutely. Great point. Great point. Great point, Paul Turner again. Oh, yeah, well, he's meant to, uh, he's talking to uh, her. <coughs> Gary Rigby. Man City at Cheech, we won that, basically. Yes. And dirty, dirty plays. That Man City, yes. Bro, uh, Frank, uh, Daryl will be back in five minutes. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, Ian McHale. City try and bully opponents and officials. That's why I'm glad that we got stuck into them from the off. Yeah. I seen um, Kyle Walker, you know, when he, he fouled someone and he went, get in, you know, get in, get in, yeah, don't yeah. Get, in get in there, get in, get stuck in. Michael Oliver said, done nothing. I couldn't believe that. And I think he's the best referee in the Premiership. So you. That's how poor our referee is. Or the referees, the other referees. I think if we'd have done a few of them tackles that they'd done on us, we'd have definitely seen yellows, wouldn't we? A few of their tackles. I think uh, Paul Drunk's getting uh, some stick here. Norman, even in goal, drunk for ego, are you drunk? That's because he's sitting here. Uh, keep it real, eh, drunk for ego. We play Sheffield United and Crystal Palace at home. I'm very confident that goal difference will be made up against both of the teams. Mm -hmm. I think he's coming for some stay. Hey, McHale, drunk. How is it? A must win with 30 points still to play for. I'm confused. And uh, Alfred uh, Bradley Quansar, Elliot Quetpright. Quite breathtaking today. My goodness, we have three gems in them, lads. 
and I've always been hard on Elliot, but his levels are superb currently. And uh, after the international break, we have Ali, Trent, Curtis back, and hopefully Canetta, it says Paul Turner. Oh, yeah, definitely Paul, uh, Paul uh, And uh, would have been a must win with three to four games to go? Not. Ten. Yes. Well said, Ian. Um, Tony. All right, Frank, how are you doing, mate? I'm okay. These are great, uh, great comments, Tony, and the good lads on the uh, on the pod tonight. Zia Udu. Oh, he's talking to uh, some lads. Apart from his goals, that Harlan lad does nothing. No. Can I just I ask me? I wouldn't say he does nothing. He does scare small children, doesn't he? Yeah, and, and girls. If he had no money, right? Say like he he was a um, say like he, he was a butcher, mm. like or a painter. You know, I mean a decorator. Does not mean a uh, an artist? Do you think he'd uh, cop off loads of times if he went to the pub or the club? I don't think so, do you? I, wonder, I think I'll put him in touch with a uh, good plastic surgeon. <laughs> TW, apart from his goals that Ireland, lads, I just, yeah, oh, sorry, I just said that. And Norman says, we were brilliant second half. We would have had more taken where we at the start of the season. What a club we are. Draw. A draw is fine because it's as we were with City. What people are forgetting as well, uh, that's even on the comments. We're still a team in progress. We're still gelling. No one said that. These, This is a new midfield, an out and out new midfield. Right, so I'm going to ask uh, everyone here, would you have taken Nunes off and replaced them with an out of form? Who's doing absolutely nothing? Um, Gapco, I'll go to you, JK. I didn't understand that substitution, you know. Um, I just feel when Darwin's on the pitch, something's going to happen. And uh, Gapco actually had a chance to win it as well. He ended up passing it to Zara. You remember that? That that that, that yeah. there was the opportunity what I've been wishing for for weeks. That gap was going to pop up in a big game and do something, and that was the moment. And what did, he ended up passing to Salah, and that chance went. Um, I just didn't understand. Maybe Darwin was tired because he's sort of just coming back from injury as well. But for me, that substitution just didn't make sense because for me, Darwin is more likely to get a goal than Gapko, you know. So. But what about uh, this uh, Street 25? I don't think I've had him on before. And he says, don't, know, don't normally moan, but how, how, how that was not a penalty? I don't get it. Worse than a rugby foul. And that's what he says. So, you know, that was a penalty. We, we, we did sp speak about it before. Uh, stay. We did speak about it before, and we all agreed that it was a penalty. And I, if it would have been up at Manchester City, then most probably it would have been given. I don't know why VAR didn't get involved like they did uh, last week. Remember when they got involved with it? Uh, anyway, so you know we we still, we still got to play VAR as well under the. Why is it Gapco not hit that in the box? That was that chance and he squared it, didn't he? Okay. I don't talk about Gap. I don't want to talk about Gapco. He leaves me deflated and sad, says Anfield Raw. And uh, no chance. Nunes should have stayed on. Gapco is a way off pace. Okay. And Wait, he's wearing them pink. He, he's wearing pink boots, bro. Like, come on. Like, I've got nothing against the color pink. 
But when I see yeah. a footballer who plays for Liverpool wearing pink football boots, it doesn't really make me smile, you know what I mean? Um, ever since he's been wearing them, he hasn't scored. Leave him to the side, bro. Come on. Well, the thing is, you see, he gets paid for that. Yeah, he did a, he did an advert uh, for New Balance. And yeah. um, just the colour pink, man. It just... Have you ever seen a footballer who's really good and he wears pink boots? No. <laughs> there you go. Come on, man. Well, I get paid for wearing this wig, you see. So, and these glasses. Because I don't I think, really wear glasses. I think Darwin was taken off for safety reasons more than anything. I think that's what yeah. the sub was. I don't think Jürgen would have subbed him. If he hadn't crashed into the post and he hadn't just come back from injury, mm -hmm. I think he would have stayed on to give us more menace. But I think it was a safety thing, a precautionary thing from the clock today. Yeah. That's so, That's the way I read it anyway. Yeah. No, well, you know, there's lots of permutations, uh, but Capcom, I don't understand the way. Like, Steve, well, uh, just let me say this. Just let me say this because Capco will come good, say Steve 25. Okay. Same thing happened to Gapco last season versus Brighton. But what happened to McAllister at the end with Ducky? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, listen, I just want to say to the people out there, will you press the like, please, and uh, just subscribe. Get me algorithm out there, please. That would be lovely if you did. Thank you so much. Thank you. If you do, that is. If you do. And um, Norman says, uh, last day of 2022 season, City versus Villa two minutes earlier, early. Oliver blew the whistle, stopping the Villa chance to uh, to maybe score and give us the league. Even Neville said he's, he's blown too early. He has robbed us again, the twat. Oh, I didn't mean to say that. See, yeah, I'm just I just yeah. He, he's cringe, that guy. You know, he's going to... There's no good referees in the Premier League. Let's just... Let's cut it just right there. They are... It's actually so bad... This season is us against injuries, referees and VAR. And then think and Man City have got it the easiest, you know. They haven't really got Grealish injured. VAR referees more likely on their side. It's a joke. And they spend more than us. Well, Drunk Vigo's uh, come back and said a tired Darwin Nunes would have done more than a fresh gap call. And I think he's, uh, he's right. And I'm feeling, uh, watching Gakko live, he moves between the width of the six-yard box. He needs to work 100% harder and get his mind on being the best he can be. He looks out of his depth. The whole crowd, yeah, groans. He did. He did. And I think that's a... I think it's pivotal for what he said there. I'm feeling, uh, he's out of his depth. He looks out of his depth. And, you know, to me, I think that's a comment about Gapco. He looks out of his depth. Yeah, but... Um, no, I just feel that he's the fifth choice attacker. Um, and he's had opportunities now to do actually do something in the last few weeks and stuff. And the pink boots, I know I keep going on about it, but... Ever since he's wearing them, he's messed up his game, you know. But I have no issues with the guy because I just feel we've seen glimpses of him actually scoring good goals. You know, that header to Salah where he got the flick on against Brentford for an assist. So there's a player in him. I think Thursday he'll be starting against uh, Prague at Anfield. That's another game for him to get on the score sheet. So, but for me, he's fifth choice. We shouldn't really be moaning because who else there, who else would come as a fifth choice attacker for Liverpool, you know, and be happy. Yeah. Well, at least, uh, would you go along? I'm going to ask Daryl. Just let me finish these two off. Uh, Gapko has been, has been non-existent for the past five games or so, says Drunk. And uh, 
Paul Turner. If Oliver's is our best referee, I wouldn't like to see the worst. Daryl, well, uh, Drunk Vigo said Gapco has been non existent the last few games. What do you think? Yeah, I'll totally agree with, with uh, Drunk on that comment. Um, at the end of the day, Gapco's only bought on for legs. He can run and run and run and run and run before, before if I can. It just doesn't. But even it's like a headless chicken. It, it, I, I hate to say it because because I, I do think there's something in there in him, like JK says. But he's only bought on for legs to run. That's all he that's all he does. That's all he does. And if you and with a comment about the referees, if you notice all for all three of the massive decisions against it this year have gone all three games against our closest rivals, all three teams. Tottenham, yeah. Arsenal, City. I'm not seeing yeah. City on the end of a bad decision yet. A really bad decision that cost them. I've just not seen it. Maybe we will sometime in the future, but I've not seen it yet. No. No. But, see... As the uh, as the says about Gapco, Gapco is a good player but low on confidence. He needs the same support given to Nunes. This is Liverpool. Totally agree with you, but we're trying to win the uh, the league. To be honest, then, and to bring Nunes up, I disagree with uh, you know precautionary uh, taking off. I disagree. I was wanting to beat City today. We were all over them. We were really biting. We were biting them. We were biting them everywhere. And to take them off for a player who, uh, as you know, was low on confidence and putting them in there. Now, if it would have been, if Dan, young Dan's would have been fit, he could have brought him on instead of Gapco. And I think he would have done it. If you, I think Dan's is an amazing player, by the way. I'm not just saying that. I'm not just saying that. And uh, Anfield Raw, JK, how is, how, how is he fifth choice behind Nunes and Jota? He needs to, crit, he needs to be criticised. I don't want a fifth. I want a hungrier player. So what have you got to say to that, JK? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean fifth in that way of you got we got our five attackers. Salah's number one. Darwin, Yota, maybe two, three there. Diaz four, and then Gapco fifth. You know, um, in quality wise, I mean, um, of course he needs to be criticised. But the thing is, he knows himself. He needs to uh, step up. You know, he's had all these games now, and he yeah. hasn't done nothing. He hasn't done like nothing. You know, he had that good game against Brentford away. Yeah. And since then, he hasn't done nothing. So, yeah, for sure, he needs to be criticised. But I just feel that the guy knows himself. I think a lot majority of footballers know if they had a bad game or not, you know. What's your take, Daryl? Wow. Um, I personally think Salah's not our number one striker no more, JK. I think Nunes is that number one for us now. Um, definitely, but um, Gakpo is Gakpo is that fifth choice striker. He's, he's not getting in front of the other four, not a chance. Um, he needs to he needs to do he needs to do more, a, a lot more. We're in a title run now. We can't afford him just be running around. He's got to get involved in these games. Well, JK, JK, you know, you know what? Let, let's be honest here. Let's be honest. I wanted Conaty to play today. I really did. Man City are a great side. And I was thinking, you know, we've got Kelleher in goal. We've got young Bradley right back. Don't get me wrong what I'm saying here. And I was thinking, who would you put next to Virgil if Conaty isn't playing? Now, don't do hindsight on me, please. Who would you like to have seen partner um, Virgil today with the absence of Conaty? 
be honest. Yeah, yeah, Kwanzaa. I don't really want to see Gomez at centre back again. Uh, I don't want to ruin that rhythm. Him playing right back, left back. Um, so for me, Kwanzaa, and I think Kwanzaa played great second half. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I didn't want you to say that. You know, that's hindsight, as I said. And I'm going to go to, I don't know where the other fella's gone. He's gone off and gone. Get some fucking names. Um, Daryl. Uh, yeah, Quanza. Same as, same as JK, Frank. Quanza. I don't think you can play no one else at centre half. Gomez, I, I, don't, I, I know Joey's versatile. But I prefer him to be either the right, right or left back, not the centre half. No, uh, the question was, you know, uh, okay, no, that's fine, that's fine. Sorry, say it again, say it again, Frank. No, it's okay. I'll, I'll, oh. I'll ask you this. I'll ask you this. When you seen the team, you know, the team sheet, how did you feel? Did you feel confident? <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie, Frank. I said to my dad when I was in the team shit, I thought we were going to get bad. On, honestly, no way of a lie. When okay. I saw, obviously, when I saw no Salah, I thought we're in trouble here. But okay. JK, what about you? How was it? Yeah, yeah. Um, of course, I want to see Salah starting. Only worry was Bradley, Kwanzaa, both on the same side. But as we've seen, they both played well. So I wasn't really worried about City as uh, I think they started off well, City, but second half, we that was top class. So disappointed in the result, actually. So that says it all with half of like how many injured players we've got. Yeah, okay. I think. <laughs> Uh, I, th this is good. This, you know, honestly, uh, Norman says Jota, Jota injury is what may stop us winning the league. Please God, I'm wrong. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, Jota will come back, you know, near the end of the season. So all's not lost. After today's performance, I think we're going to win the league, and that's the first time I've said it. Because I I seen Liverpool. Don't forget, you know, Liverpool always come strong at the end of a season, and this is the strong that they're going through now. This is the strong. We've got our players back. Soon as this international break is over, we'll have our players back. We'll have the likes of Ali back in goal, and that's another thing. There, I'm going to say Keller has Keller has been brilliant. I'll start with you, Lee. If Ali's fit, what would you do? Yeah, to bring Ali back in, because I do think he is the best goalie in the world, and he might have even had a chance of keeping that corner shenanigans out. Did you notice that was the only way he could score against us, that crap? Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, it was, wasn't it a horrible goal to concede? A can't you not crap player out. What? No, what he's it? let one in before. I'm sorry, he, he's let one in before near, the near. I forget it was. It was a Luton near post. Mm. I forget who it was against. I thought he should have had that. You know, I, I'm, I'm not criticising Kelleher. No, I'm, I'm not. It's been brilliant. Yeah, but I'm just saying, you know, near post. You know, I think he's a bit vulnerable. And yeah, I think. Uh, Ali was a got that because he, yeah. he's that big, he was a covered it. Oh, but yeah, Keller got an hand to it or an arm. Yeah. And it still went in, if you know what I mean. But I'm sure so been good. brilliant. And I love what he's been doing. He's been brilliant. But Ali is a better goalkeeper and more experienced and might have kept that out. To be yeah. honest, it wasn't really Keller. It was like the rest of them letting that happen. But like the Carabao Cup final, that nonsense where Virgil scored and they said, Endo blocked the guy. And it was like, well, what was that then? What was a Kanji doing there? Shoving him out the way. Surely that was blocking him or moving him out the way. Is it not the same thing? I think it is. And I think, like you said, Frank, we're up against the refs. The refs and VAR are trying their damnedest to keep us from winning it. 
They're jammed just to keep us from winning it. Because they want City to win it every year with their fake money. They're, they're cheating off the pitch. They're cheating on the pitch. They want them to win. You could hear bloody Gary Neville and whoever that turd head was bloody commentating with them. You could hear that they were semi tumescent when City went in the lead. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I wasn't like seeing a picture of their pants because they were up there with when they scored. Like, it's like a bloody you make these names of these words of semi tumescent. <laughs> semi tumescent, yeah. That means halfway there. Right, oh well, that's that's right. You like tickets, big corner. Anyway, anyway. But I think they've never been uh, should. Should have been left on, says uh, the drunk. Steve says, uh, who would you like to... Yeah, there is one. I'll go through you, Charlie. Uh, uh, I'll start with you, Daryl. Who would you like to replace Salah should he go next season? I would like Kane or Tony. Personally, I would like uh, Cabbage Valley from Napoli. Thank you. That's who I'd like. But I can't pronounce his name. Cavish Valley. I, I, I'm just. I, I could just about uh, pronounce the uh, pronounce um, Lee's name. Lee Carlson's name. <laughs> J.K. Who is you like to see? Um, I like Neto from Wolves, but the guy got injured again yesterday. Hamstrings. Is injury pro? Yeah, I think um, like the 12th man was saying yesterday, it's like when you get something injured in your body, it never goes 100% like it used to be. And I think no. Neto has had a few hamstrings now. And talented wise, the guy's brilliant for me. He's like mm. ideal to replace Salah. Um, other than that, to tell you the truth, the wingers out there, who could you go for, really? You know? Um, there's loads of names, but not quality, quality like Salah. So I've even heard like Salah saying in the last few days that Klopp leaving doesn't mean that he wants to leave. So well, I like, well, I like to be honest, JK. I like the lad from Napoli who uh, Daryl mentioned. I like him. He destroyed us, that lad. He's a brilliant player. What about you, Lee? Would you like to see the place? You know, if he go, I don't think he'll go. He's happy here at Liverpool. He's just come out and said it. So, you know, if he does go, hypothetically, who would you like to see the place? Well, like Jay just said, um, like JK just said, Neto would be perfect, but the guy's injury prone. Like, I mean, the guy's. Um, he's like Thiago. He's like Thiago, but a winger, mate. He's just always injured. Always injured. I like Bowen. I think Bowen's good, and Bowen could possibly be decent. Karakmania, yeah, he's good as well. Um, Too the, old. Yeah, it's it's who's gonna cost. It's who's gonna cost less, isn't it? Like really, because with our owners, it's who's gonna cost less. As much as we don't like FSG, and some people do, they're not going anywhere anytime soon. Like the royal family, they're gonna be here, like for the long haul, and we've got to put up with them. So. <laughs> So to be fair, to be like fairly, to be to be fairly, sorry to cut in, mate. Um, I'd like someone, obviously, like uh, Karish Velier, someone, someone who's going to light up Anfield every week. I just don't think Bowen or Neto will light it up every week like he does. No. Someone who's going to, someone who's going to get the fans on side. Yeah, I'm, I'm not uh, sure they've got a great record. Them players from them type of countries coming in. I mean, uh, not in that position. Who's been good from Ukraine? I can't really think of anyone, to be honest. Like, is anyone? Shevchenko, Shevchenko, probably. That's it. Shevchenko, yeah. yeah. Mm. Shevchenko was great. I liked him myself. Until he played us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Alfred Ross, uh, when Man United had, had Cole, York, Sheringham, and Solskjaer. None of them were passengers. Winners have hungry players, not Gapko. He'll come good. Or there's a player in there. It's all these things that, yeah. yeah. I always remember, uh, what's his name? Brewster and younger uh, Woodburn. 
and they were saying, you know, oh, this, he's going to be great, he's going to be this, you know, both of them that is. I, I said at the time, no chance. No chance. The, 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 they haven't risen that level. They just stays at a level, and I think the level will be there. They, they won't improve. And I think I've been vindicated on that, to be honest. The thing with Sheringham, uh, like, compared to Gakpo as a backup striker, Sheringham was really experienced at about, like, 29 mm. Wasn't he 30 or 31 when United bought him? Because he played till yeah, he was 38. Yeah. He was about 31 or 32 when Fergie bought him with bags of experience and scored lots of goals. Whereas um, Cozy's young and coming from a different league, whereas Sheringham had played his entire career in England before. Oh. And so we got to look at that. Well, soul boy Francis, uh, Diaz missed loads of chances as well. But if that's gap call, it's let let's get rid. The thing is, uh, soul boy, that was mentioned before. To be honest, and uh, it has been mentioned on this pod, you know about the terrible form gap call showing. And, you know, if you're a great, this is just me, if you're a great player, you don't go game after game after game, game after game uh, with poor form. But he's just been so, so awful. So awful. It's, you know, I can't put us any further than that. And he's been given opportunities by Klopp every game to come out and you know prove himself oh but yes he's, he's in double figures for goals in all competitions which which is crazy which is crazy usually about like a player you'd say the more they play games in a row games 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 the better their form gets but i think gakpo has got a bit burnt out of late because we've had nobody else we've only had him in diaz Nunes is out, Salah's out, Jota's been out. Salah hasn't played since, what was it, January the 1st or yeah. something like that. And then um, the thing with, uh, where was it going with that? Um, we just haven't had any alternatives to Gakpo and Diaz for about six weeks or five weeks or something, whatever it is. Someone can say I'm wrong, but it's about six weeks or something, five weeks or... It's been a lot of games where we've had no alternative and I think he's been burnt out a little bit like me. Some good comments here, lads. And I'm going to do two of them. I'm going to do two of them. Uh, and one of them... Drunk says... Um, this was a great opportunity for Saboslo Saboslo to do something and he didn't do anything right and uh stay a long time can i finish mm -hmm. <laughs> right so i agree frank uh, i'm sorry this is this was a great opportunity for sir Bosley to do something and he didn't do anything right that's what uh the drunk says uh, Steve, uh, Steve 25 bit buried so last comment but but anything but three points for Arsenal versus City and the title is on for the pool right what what the drunk said about um, Sir Bosley he missed his opportunity today to stamp his authority don't forget he scored the other night and plays well against Prague he wasn't that dire really today, JK. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, we ended up playing better when he went off the pitch. He, yeah. his, he didn't. He was okay. He didn't really do nothing special and stuff. He no. got thrown in. He got sort of thrown in at the deep end. Played. How, how many minutes did he get against Prague? Thirty minutes, twenty minutes. Yeah. So to be thrown in in that first half against City. Um, he must have took something out of him, and maybe Klopp seen that took him off. Uh, no need to uh, to rush the guys, you know. 
But Sobotrai, I was just expecting a bit more from him. After his his uh, sub appearance the other day, he looked really good the other day in Prague. He just looked on it, you know. But in the first half today, mm, not so. Okay. Let's be honest, if Curtis was fit, Curtis would have played and not Sobotrai. We had to rush Sobotrai back in straight out of nowhere because we had nobody else. Good point. Daryl? Um, well, to be honest with you, I think Sabos like it was a no brainer for, for him. He had to go in there because we didn't really have anybody else. He was put in there today for, for legs more than anything, I for me. Because when you've got a midfield like Man City have, we need the legs and you're going to be running around a lot. And I think that's what he was put in there to that's the job he was put in there to do. Like, he had the more creative players, obviously, were with you. Your Diaz's, your Elliot's, your McAllister's, and the Endos and the Sobozalis were there to do the job and sturdy up the midfield. Mm-hmm. And I think it worked. I think it worked today. De Bruyne was so quiet for Man City today. Okay. He held him off. Well, I'll go to you, Lee. 30 points to play for, yes, with 10 games to go, and we are second on goal difference. We are in a great <coughs> position. And uh, Norman says, Enzo blocks the guy, cra- blocks the guy, crap in cup final. When Doku does it, front of kick to chest. Mr. Torsen, yeah. Where are you going? Yeah. Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't fucking matter anymore. 30 points to play for, Paul Turner says, and we're still up there. Again, I, I keep reiterating reiterate myself uh, by saying about um, Liverpool, they've got a brand new, brand spanking new midfield, and look where we are. And I think that we're in a better position for the quad than we were a couple of seasons ago. And I've said that before. Would you agree, JK? In a weird way, yeah, man. Um, Today, even before the game, I said we're going to win today. And we should have won today. Um, I just feel the energy within the squad with the young guys coming through as well. Like today, Kwanzaa, Bradley and Elliot all started. So amazing that is. So, yeah, I think um, the energy just seems a little bit different this time round. Um, you know, we're still top of the league, not on goal difference, <laughs> but we lost two games all season in the Premier League. Not yeah. bad. No, but we've drawn how many have we drawn? Seven or something like six, seven, seven, I think, yeah. Seven. You know, it, it, it could, I hope it's not a one draw too many. A one draw too many. But anyway, um, but anyway, what do you think about uh, what I've just said there, Terrell? Um, yeah, I agree. Um, obviously, what, what, what were the points and stuff to play for? Yeah. We got, at the end of the day, we... Even if Man City beating Arsenal is not a bad thing, they've got they've got they've got a running harder than us. Arsenal got a running harder than us, and the big factor of, of where where this defi- defining the season comes from now is we're at home to Spurs. They're both away to Spurs. We have to see this as a massive, massive chance of winning this title this year. Now, for me, I put as favourites to win the league right now. That's in my, in my opinion. In my opinion. Well, I, I, that was good because that was my thinking. Uh, after, if we wouldn't have got a result today, I thought, we, you know, I would have just said, well, that's it. Uh, we're only a team in progress until next season. But that performance today, it's as though that team had been playing, you know, for years together. And they hadn't, we still had kids in. And you were talking about, you know, when Salah goes, um, 
who is your replacing with? Well, we've got a kid there. We've got Young Elliot. Young Elliot was good today, wasn't he? And he can play out there in the right. So there mightn't be anyone coming in. <clears throat> and uh, totally agree, says Anfield Raw with Lee. I cannot believe blocking on the city uh, was given. But our League Cup goal versus Chelsea was ruled out for the same act. Blocking space so it's clear reps are against us. That's what I couldn't understand there. I thought he was a blow. I really did. I really did. It's, it's like, do you ever remember Mo Salah? When uh, he was pushed on offside after we scored. Mm -hmm. He was pushed offside and he was given offside. Yeah, he was pushed. So that was a foul anyway. And yet he was pushed offside. And the and goal was... Tierney. Yeah, I don't, I, yeah, I think it was. So you know, would you agree? Yeah, ref yeah. who was it that stopped us winning the treble? It weren't the ref, it was VAR, but Tierney was the one on VAR who said Rodri's and ball wasn't clear and obvious. If that's not clear and obvious, I don't know what is. Yeah. And I think if we would have won the league by a point, if Richarlison scored the <laughs> resulting penalty that Everton would have been given. That's one all. We win the league by a point, and that bounce from winning the league probably would have took us over the hurdle against Real Madrid. It could have done potentially. Yeah. Anyway, about Sabah's like not playing great today. Everyone says De Bruyne is like the best midfielder that the Prem seen or one of them. But like he's still playing his way back into form, and he's been back for a few weeks now. That was Sabah's like's first start in ages. But I don't want to contradict myself because I also think Gakpo's had a lot of starts, but I think he's just been overused because we had no alternative. Well, that's what I'm telling myself anyway. Do you know where I'm coming from with that? Of course, of course. Klopp always says, doesn't he? They have to have a rhythm. They have to get into their rhythm. So yeah. Salah, Sabozlai, anybody else who's but Salah, Salah's been out. Any of them players, they've got to get back into their rhythm. But I do think Gakpo's been slightly overused in recent weeks because we've had no alternative. All we've had is him and Diaz fit. Jota, Salah and Nunes weren't fit or playing or even in the squad. Well, all right, talking about Salah, I'll go to you, uh, JK. What did you think of, uh, of Salah's uh, performance when he came on? Mm, mm. Look lively. Um... I just feel if Salah was the guy uh, when Diaz had that, when he was through and uh, Diaz should have scored that, I think if that was Salah, that's a Salah type of goal. I just feel he would have scored that. But um, I don't know. I think I was expecting a bit more from him as well, maybe. Okay. All right. Lee? Yeah, I thought Mo was crap when he come on, actually. like, But um, it's because he's not played in a while, like... Everything he did turn to shit today, basically. <laughs> but um, it's because he ain't played for a while, and that's the long and short of it. What about you, Lee? Uh, um, Dallas. Yeah, to be fair, his injury, you could see his injuries really affected him. He made a brilliant through ball for, for Diaz today, which should, is, should have scored. But yeah. for, for, for now... From now until the end of the international break, you don't use Salah against Prague. He's not playing for Egypt in the international break. That's been confirmed now. You wrap yeah. him up with cotton wool, let him train alone on his own now until we get back to the Brighton game. That's what I would do right now. Yeah, no, that's a good point. I, I agree there. Put that on his own, you know, just let him train and... <laughs> And as TW says, no more injury prone players, please. That's Neto regarding Neto, uh, yeah. Go on, what was you saying? Uh, yeah, that was regarding Neto when we wanted to know who would we replace yeah. Salah with. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I feel sorry for the lad, Neto. I really like him as a player as well. Yeah, he's a great player. Mm -hmm. He's a great player, what but you know, we don't need any more injury prone players coming in. And uh, 
Norman says, if it's Alonso coming in, I could see us trying for Leon Bailey from Villa, who play on the right side with his left foot. Mm -hmm. I actually like him, Bailey. Yeah, yeah. That sounds mad, that, isn't it? I can see him playing on the right side with his left foot. <laughs> The only player, the only player I want coming from Villa, if we do go in for anyone, would be Douglas Louise. He'd be the only one I'd want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's He'd be fantastic. Yeah, he's good. Yeah. But Bailey's doing okay. Um, I've seen glimpses of him. I've watched him play a few times and he looks lively, you know. He's a Jamaican international He's doing pretty well for himself there. He's getting game. He's getting more game time than uh, Diaby, the guy they bought from Leverkusen for about forty-five million. He's not getting no game time. Bailey's always getting picked. So fair play yeah. to him. Yeah. Funny enough, yeah, I already remember this. Norman says Roy well, Evans tried to buy Sheringham from Spurs, but the board said no. Too old. Then Manx bought him. That's true. Though. I don't know whether you're aware of that. And here's a juxtaposition here. Diaz was our best player and worst player today. Says <laughs> the, the drunk. Just imagine if we would have scored those two or just even one to win the game. You'd all be drooling over Diaz. But I've always liked Diaz. And I'll tell you for why. He's direct. He gets at defences. No matter what, he always makes a nuisance of himself. Now, you know, they say that Nunes does the same, you know, he, he makes a nuisance of himself in the opposing uh, defences. And he does, Captain Chaos. But uh, Diaz is the same type of player, not the same type of player as, as, uh, uh, as Nunes, but... He's the same type of player that causes havoc. He really does because he's so direct. And he just tries to get to the byline and crosses it, which fails sometimes, by the way. Yeah, but he's the guy, he's the go-to guy to get the pressure off the, off the defence. Give him the ball and he'll run with it. And, with, and that two, three, four, five seconds he's got the ball, the defence takes shape again. Uh, that's his main job. I've watched him all season. And I realised when he's on the ball, yeah, he don't score the amount of goals and assists that we really want him to. I understand that. But his main job is to take the pressure off the defence and midfield just by running with the ball. OK. Well, CW says, massive difference between Prague and City. John did OK coming back from injury. I totally agree with him. I really do. Good one. And... Uh, he says, dead right, Daryl, whatever you were dead right about. I'm sorry. Lottery numbers. <laughs> and as the drunk says, I thought we were going to win today as well. Yeah. It was just unlucky. He was so good. He was so unlucky. Realism, Jared, draws our killers. All our title runs. We lost a winning team, lost more than us, yes. All our title runs we lost. Must have been lost to the winning team lost more than us, yes. It's about it's about how many points you have, not how many you lose. Well, it's like anything, that that particular comment, it's like anything, you know, you could say in any profession as well. It's what's on the table that counts, or on the board that counts. And the drunk says, uh, favourites to win the league, uh, and he, you know, he puts an exclamation and, and a question mark. I don't know. Uh, give me what you're smoking, brother. Oh, that's, that's because I said we'd win the league, is it? Yeah. Negativity coming again. Yeah. I don't smoke, to be honest, brother. Or do I? And Paul Turner, uh, both City and Arsenal have to go to Tottenham and they are fighting for the top four. They turned Villa over. 
today at their place. That's what I'm saying about, you know, we've got the easier running. The only uh, difficult game uh, that we've got really is the Everton game, the Derby game. And you know what it's like here in Liverpool. It's Anything could happen on Derby days. And we're playing at Goodison as well. And they're fighting relegation. So anything, that's our toughest game. The fighting relegation oh. now, but hopefully by the time we play them, is it the next to last game of the season? It's meant to be yeah. being changed yeah. for. Well, yeah. hopefully it'll be decided by then. And even if it is decided by then and Everton are up or down, they'll still try and screw us for the league because they don't want us to win the league. But it will be easier if Everton's face has already decided, which it wouldn't have been if we had played them. Uh, we were meant to play them next, weren't we? After the yeah. um, city, but hopefully their fate will be decided, and it won't be such a, um, a monumental game for Everton if their fate's already decided. That's what I'm hoping. Still be a hard game, and we've got to go to Castle Grayskull, haven't we, Old Stratford? I mean, yeah. I'd happily go out the FA Cup and win the league game, me like. Yeah. Well, that's all. Uh, we, 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 we always say those type of things, if, don't we? Or I'd rather, you know, go out to this or, and win that game instead of this game. And so we always say things like that. And also, Frankie, and also, Frankie, um, you got like, like, like saying like how how we're not favourites for the league. As as we as I just meant as I mentioned. They've got to both go to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Arsenal got to play Chelsea on the last day of the season, as well. That's why I'm putting. That's why I'm saying that I'm putting us as favourites. For for the pure fact is they got both of them got so tough games to, compared to ours. Okay. Well, Paul Turner says both City and Arsenal have to go to Tottenham, and they are fighting for the top four. They turn Villa over today at their place. J.K. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah and City and Arsenal have to play each other. Yeah. So no yeah. matter what, someone's going to either drop three points, two mm -hmm. points, or zero points. You know. So go go ahead, tell me. Yeah, yeah. I just see it like this, bro. That um, when Doku hit the post today, okay, yeah. that could have gone in, or it could have came out. And normally, Harlan. He's, the best part of Haaland's game is he was reading the second ball when the goalie saves it. He always knows where he's going to end up. It's supposed he knows. For some reason, he wasn't there. And we could have lost that game 2-1 uh, today. Um, yeah, we should have got a penalty and stuff like that. But that would have made City gain three points on us and with us not gaining any points on no one with a zero. So the 1-1 one -one there is sort of okay, even though we should have won it. But... I see the Arsenal and, and also the Arsenal City game is another reason why I didn't think today's result is as bad as some fans might think it is, you know. I think the fans are just disappointed that we could have won it. Uh but for me, Arsenal, they're just they're winning, winning they actually won in the last minute yesterday against Brentford, two one. Um and they've got a London North London derby to deal with as well. With the Tottenham team who look okay, actually, you know, so there's big games getting played, and like, uh, yeah, you were saying Arsenal got Chelsea at the end of the season as well. Well, I've seen a comment there which is, uh, which is wishful thinking. I'll tell you for why in a moment. Uh, and Mark Simon says, uh, Mo will get, will get sold when Jürgen's gone for big bucks. I'll bear that in mind with this one and for you uh, in the summer gap go out and musala in i want us to buy big can you comment i'll go to you lee can you comment on those two comments what mark simon said about mo getting sold and also uh <coughs> gap go out what do you think um I'd still like Mo to stay for the dip at the Champions League, but if we sell him and get big money, 
I'll be equally as pleased, if not more pleased, because we need that money. We ain't got money. We've got no money. We've never had no money under FSG. There's tighter ass as it gets, and the crap owners. So we probably will need to sell Mo, and I'd be happy with that. Like, if we can sell Mo and buy new players in a few different positions, I'd be happy with that. Musiala, no. I, uh, I like him, but I mean, they're not going to sell us him, are they? Who does he play for? Bayern. Bayern. Yeah. Bayern. We're not getting him then, are we? Like, um, Gakpo, no, I'll be keeping Gakpo. Um, yeah, there you go. Okay. JK. Uh, Salah leaving this summer is right up uh, the owner's street, you know, where they're going to get Big dough for a 31 year old, that's just like prime time money board for them. That is like the guy's been here seven years or and he's done, he's gave his soul to us. Now we can get a fee for him, and it's amazing if we can get a high fee for Salah. You know, um, it's a ch like for me personally, if he stays, he stays, if he goes, he goes, you know. Um, but I feel that the fee we could get for him if we sold him would be used to get new players, you know, for the next manager. So Business-wise, it makes sense. But you've seen Salah, how good he is. He's probably still got another year, two years at the top level. You know, so you don't know. I agree with you there because he's only come out, hasn't he, the last 48 hours and said, you know, about Yerd and going, he's, um, you know, are you looking towards your future? He said, I'm happy here. That's what he said. Yep, yep. I'm happy here. And, you know, you... Mo's an um, honest person, like he is an honest footballer. And whatever he says, you know, I believe, and he is happy here. And I believe what you uh, said me about, uh, sorry, JK, about him having another season or two at the top level. And he has. He has. Did you see the guy's six pack? Did you see his six pack? Yeah. Like, yeah. he's. To be <laughs> To be honest, it's, robot, mine. <laughs> it's mine that one, that six pack. I lent him oh, a you, you you body. Yeah. Body. Yeah. Body. 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 I just think, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I just yeah. think, like, like with, like, obviously with Michael Edwards and Richard Hughes coming in, where uh, Michael Edwards has got a ruthless streak about keeping over thirty players, any thirty odd year old players. He might see that see this as a chance to to sell Salah, get big money for him, have a big summer. That's what I, that's that's what I'm on the mm -hmm. on the edge of leaning towards. To be honest, I think they will do that because what happened with Henderson and Milner last time, they kept him when when Edwards wanted them gone. So I'm getting that feeling he might not want to keep Salah because he's hit he's hitting. It'd be thirty-two next year, and and they don't like having old players in their team, especially Edwards. Do you know what I'm expecting? A genie to come out of Daryl's ear, where he's rubbing his head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got, I'm itching like crazy tonight. I don't know why. <laughs> and uh, the offer is, I agree. I with JK there, and. Uh, Tony says, anyone else think Phil Foden looks like Cherry Blossom? The old fella that used to put his boot polish on his head. Yeah, it <laughs> was actually. Do you ever remember him? I remember, you know, when the uh, Saturday nights out with, uh, you know, the mates and used to walk in the pub and people get, and he just never give a toss because he had Cherry Blossom on his head. <laughs> Do you mean he put balls heads and he put boot polish on his head to look like hair? Is that what you're saying? I think he has a little hair. Yeah. And oh. I was still, honestly, you know, I don't think he went south if it rained, though, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that fella in the game was uh, is a crack in his beard, a good shout, that I'm feeling mm. awesome. He's Ian McHale. But then again, uh, the lads don't think. 
Buying, isn't it? Buying yeah. are going to want a hefty fee if they sell a save. And we ain't got a hefty fee because FSG are as tight assed as it gets. Sorry for swearing, but they are, aren't they? You know what I mean? There's tight Anybody could look at they they couldn't they? The, the crummy owners, the crummy rubbish owners, we ate them. Anyone who says they don't eat them is a, um, that that word re and it's got like tars on the end. That bit, that thing. That's what anyone who thinks they're good owners is. <laughs> and also, good. anybody could look good in the Bundesliga. Good job, uh, K Max, not here, isn't it? <laughs> Look the FSG. Come on, mate. The, the tragic owners, aren't they? The, the, the rubbish. They got no money. The rubbish. They call us customers. I've never seen Klopp so happy with our performance today. It was a joy to see. Talking with Pete McDowell on LFC TV says TW. And that's right, he was absolutely. And uh, I'm feeling, oh, hey, Mikhail, I think the lads will be great for us and they take us to the next level. We need a new high-level attacker. That's that lad from... Um, Bayern. There are no easy games in the Prem says drunk. Absolute joke. The referee needs red card needs needs red cards and late but fuming. Yes. That's uh Jay is a friend of is mine. Is Luciala available on a free transfer? Is that why people are saying it? Don't know. Having a clue. I don't think he is, is he? Like, it's just me being impish, but I mean, they're not going to buy us Musial or Adi Demla. He's going to be 100 million plus. Mm. Yeah. Well, what do you think of it? Uh, say Jabby comes in. Uh, you've got Michael Edwards. Now, Michael Edwards left under the cloud. Right? And do you think that He's gone in and, you know, negotiating. Now, I think he's going to turn around and say, you've got to have money to buy players, the players I want to be brought into the team. What do you think? Anyone? Well, oh. how much is half a mellow? We could probably afford him, couldn't we? Like, Not on a load. I mean, if we buy him this time, he'd be about... Um, but 12 yeah, million or something, I think we could afford it. FSG could afford him, couldn't he? Mellow about 12 million or uh, in uh, our money, something like it, MEB. No, I think if you bought Arthur Mello, it's one of those uh, deals where you buy him and get one free. <laughs> I, I personally reckon, Frank, that um, Michael Edwards has been promised money to come, to come in. He's been promised... Of course he has. Spend. But do you think, JK, do you think uh, what Daryl's just said as well? Yeah, but where they're going to get that money from? Is that by selling Salah for 150? You know? Or who else is there to sell? <laughs> yeah. um, if they can afford, if they can afford 1.2. Well, if they can in. afford, Frank, Frank, if they can afford 1.2 billion to spend on golf, they can afford to give us money for players. But they won't. They yeah, won't. the money they've used, uh, the, they bought, they've made from Liverpool. Uh, yes, last season they made a £600 million profit. So they're taking them funds and doing whatever with it. We don't know what they do with it, you know? Mm -hmm. And there's us getting a DM for £12 million, you know? Respect to Endo, uh, yeah. £16 million actually. But, uh, it just shows you where they sort of what's that word? They're always on the borderline of of uh, sort of gambling. There are little gamblers there with their signings, for example. You know, uh, Mane and Salah only worked because of Klopp, I would say, as well. You know, top boss Salah and Klopp have a top relationship, and that's worked. And that's why you're getting Salah big numbers every season because of that relationship. You know, but people are praising the owners for actually what doing what the basics, getting two new stands and a training ground. What a club like ours should have anyway. Yeah, so, but we, 
we we bought them. I don't care what anyone says. Liverpool Liverpool's got a, a massive forget the owners. They've got massive collateral. They make millions. Millions. So they can afford those two stands, you know, the, the main one now and the Anfield Road. Liverpool's they, paper. They haven't. They haven't gone like that. I'll tell you what, we take all these millions out of the funds. They've taken our millions. Mm -hmm. Using our millions. The hedge yeah. funders. What you call hedge funders. Just to pick up on what Daryl said, um, I think Michael Edwards has been promised money, but it's not transfer money, it's just dinner money. John W. Henry said, um, we'll buy you your dinner if you come back and work for us. You don't have to bring a pack lunch in or nothing. We will actually <laughs> buy you your dinner every day when you come mm -hmm. into work. Well, anyway, uh, I, I want you to, I'm going to make myself a cup of, I'll have to. I'm dead thirsty. Uh, the Awakening Phoenix. Yeah, look, he's got up and got him. Oh, he fell over me. The leg of my iron board, then. Has he got a stain on the iron board? Yeah. Lee's got, Lee's got ants in his pants. Lee's got ants in his pants. As usual, yeah. The Awakening Phoenix, anyway, lads, and I'll go straight to the NK. Evening. I'd like, I'd like, I'd, I'd move Salah on and get Kudos or Kudos or some other proper winger. Maybe move Diaz to the right and get Kvick. Is that the fella you mentioned? Yeah. It is, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I agree there, Awakening Phoenix, because I like that a lot from Napoli. There are numerous ways to invest. Go ahead, JK. Okay. And then uh, now I just feel the whole Salah topic. Um, have you uh, the interview we just did recently? Guy seems happy at Anfield, but uh, the way Edwards, as you were saying, Daryl, um, he don't like over 30 year old sort of players in the club, blah blah blah. That is just a too good opportunity not to cash in on Salah. You know, that figure they could possibly get for Salah now. Um, if we win the league and everything like that, we they can get a crazy fee, uh, fee for him. And with that money, they just pass it on to the next guy. It's just like, it just makes business sense, you know. But for me, I don't want to see Salah gone. I don't care if he retires with us. The guy's gave his soul to the club. He's Look, look how many goals and assists he's got this season as well. It ain't like he ain't doing nothing. It ain't like he's got two all season. The guy is still up there, and he went before he went to the African Cup of Nations. He was top goal, uh, league goal scorer with Ireland. Uh, so yeah. he went away, he got injured, and that's the only reason why he, he's, I think, three behind him. But so yeah. that's how good this guy Salah is, and he's just doing something. What I think a lot of other players can look at in the future and realize how to look after themselves, how to keep that mental state good, that you can be at that level at that age. Mm. Yeah, you're right there, mate. I, I, I agree with that. I, to, be, to be fair, uh, my honest opinion, I just think I wouldn't be worried if he went or, or stayed, to be honest. I'm happy either way. Mm -hmm. I'm happy either way. Yeah. But you, Lee? Yeah, definitely. I'd like to see him stay, as I said, for another go to the Champions League. It'd be good to have Mo in the team to have another go to the Champions League. But if he goes, then we've got that money to spend. Because FSG always come up with some excuse not to spend money. I mean, like I said about Michael Edwards, I think the deal is hinging on upon um, his dinner money at the moment. Like, and he wants to go to one of those posh restaurants where they serve haute cuisine, where it's like what a tiny mm -hmm. little thing on a plate for about eight hundred quid. But FSG has okay. said we can only afford for you to go to Subway for your dinner every day. We can't afford how cuisine, mate, on a plate like for 800 quid that big. You've got to go to Subway because it's cheap. Mm -hmm. Do you boys think? Do you boys think that we that we should uh, give an appreciation place for Joe Gomez today for how quiet he kept Phil Foden today? Yeah, yeah. Foden was that not existing. He was, wasn't he? He's the most informed player. Foden, coming into the game, the guy was on, he was on it. 
Tele yeah. non-existent. I think Bernardo Silva as well. So, yeah. I hate the pair of them. I can't stand Phil Foden's whinging face. Remember that thing where um, the ref wasn't given a pen versus Everton? A few days earlier, we were the home team versus Arsenal. And Ode- o- Odegaard and Balder as he was falling mm-hmm. over. And then mm-hmm. Onana was sliding in and like kicked it right out of his hand from point blank range, their player. Ref wasn't giving it. And then Foden went like that. Yeah, then gave it. Yeah, yeah and then he yeah, gave yeah. it. Or Mason just wanted to mm-hmm. grab him round the neck. I wanted to poke his eyes out like and beat him to death. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Foden. I I, it I was so close, man. The match. And I'd never do that to anyone. But Foden's face, when he went like that and pulled that face, mate, I just wanted to beat his face to a bloody cold and poke his back in eyes. It was all guys by the match today. I just quickly want to say about uh, Awaken Phoenix comment about Kudus. I said to other fans that we should go for Kudus when he was at Ajax. It would have been a cheaper option and it would have been okay to play with Salah. When Salah ain't playing, he can come into the team. And now, since he's gone to West Ham, he stepped up big time, you know. And I think I like the like I like his uh, worth of hit. He's pretty good. Yeah. So yeah, yeah he would have been. He would have been. A, he would have been a good cheap option to have, wouldn't he? If, if when Salah weren't there, it would have been spot on. But obviously, they didn't do that. Who was your boys' man of the match today? Mm. McAllister was mine. I would say, I think Virgil kept Harden really quiet. Yeah. So I think for me, either Virgil, even Diaz, like the guy didn't stop. Um, so it's between, for me, maybe Diaz and uh, Darwin and um, Virgil. What do you think? Uh, maybe give it to Elias just as a. As a um, shout from left field, give it to Elliot because he has a good game. Mm-hmm. He played yeah. better. He played better when he went into midfield, didn't he? And Sobers yeah. place on the right. Mm-hmm. Maybe give it to him, like just for a change. Yeah, that's a good shout, mate. I'd, for me, for me, I just thought you have to you have to go you have to go some distance to keep Rodri De Bruyne and Bernardo Silva quiet and I was, McAllister was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic today. Mm-hmm. McAllister. Endo as well. I think yeah, Endo, and Endo, both of them. Yeah. Endo played top. Respect yeah. to him, man. He played he played good. Yeah, he played good. Foden quiet is no mean feat. And I don't mean like in terms of the game. I mean his moan and stupid mouth when like that thing at, I mean, City were the away team at Goodison, don't forget. We were at home against Arsenal when Odegaard's and ball wasn't given. City mm-hmm. were away from home at Derby. City versus Everton is a Derby in the same way that Liverpool Man U is a Derby. And they just got given it because Foden went, Oh, my, my, pet. <laughs> no, but that's like, do you remember the Fergie days when they used to do the same? Uh, pool faces. I don't know if they were looking like that, but they were putting faces yeah, it's one, it's around one the thing, road. It's one thing to appeal for a pen, but it was just the way Foden pulled that face yeah, yeah. put his hands on his head. Yeah. He was your man of the match, Frank. What? He was your man of the match. McAllister. Yeah. Yeah. McAllister. He was absolutely brilliant. That was. Yeah. And the way he put the penalty yeah. his way as well. Mm-hmm. Absolutely brilliant. I agree. Soulboy says, uh, why have we got to have shiny new players? We were praising the kids. Now they're forgotten about. Dan's is going to be brilliant. We've said that, though. They're not going to be forgotten about, to be honest. We're, not, we're just saying it, it to replace, you know, players who go. But I can't see anyone going. I'm being honest. Who are you going to get of Gapko? You know, Gapko, I think, will go. Gravenberg, I think he'll go. So they're two players that uh, would have to be replaced. That's, uh, well, what do you think of that? You know, if, they, if those two did go, if those two did go, and I'll go to you, Lee, um, 
would they have to be replaced or would we just keep a uh, loyal to the kids what, what, what do you think mm, well fsg are our owners so it's probably going to be loyal to the kids in it frank so we don't have to spend any money okay. it's just not an argument for me frank when people say look at the owners before fsg yeah we know they were crap we know they were badly crap like but fsg aren't much better it's not an argument for me and neither saying look where we are well look where we could be if we spent some bloody money okay i, I agree there again because i've said all along that they haven't invested uh, on the pitch for a long time what about you jk you know if uh, say like those are those two just those two uh -huh. and they don't uh do you think we should replace them or rely on our kids um thing is it's like what lee was just saying there um since the time klopp has been at the club um man city has spent net spend has spent his double hours so them relying on the kids i think the kids have come in and bradley he's got a great future no doubt so i think he could stay at the club as well you know so it all depends on that are they going to be better than a guy that we bring in or are they going to be better than whoever comes in they'll be better so just looking at it like that can i ask the subscribers and jk and daryl because i know what your position is on it frank do you think that's an argument at all look where we are and look how bad the last owners were in saying oh fsg are all right for me it's not an argument mate it just isn't an argument saying the last owners were worse. Yeah, we know they were, mate. We were here. We were here watching it and we seen them. And also, that's not an argument saying, look where we are. We're only where we are because of Jürgen Klopp. If Pep Guardiola was our manager, well, he wouldn't be our manager because we've got no money. Well, I was uh, I was on the steps of St. George's all over Ix and Gillette. Remember when we all went down to the St. George's all plateau? It was unbelievable that, that evening, unbelievable. And uh, I was on the steps with a few uh, a few people who were giving talks. They said to me, will you give a talk? I said, yeah. <laughs> if it ends as up talk. Anyway, that's by the point. Um, the awakening, Leverkusen just won, just won against Wolfsburg. They continue their invincible win streak. Uh, really hope we get Xabi Alonso next season. And Alfie Ross says that that lad is refusing contract renewal. He, he won't be a hundred million. That's a buy-in. So you wonder if uh, rather have half a mel half a melon, Lee. <laughs> nice Paul. <laughs> and uh, that lad from <laughs> Mackerel, Mark Simon, says uh, rumours going around as well coming in for next season for a hundred million. He would be boss under Jabby, who literally plays with two tens. And uh, the drunk says uh, FSG loves to shortchange the LFC. I think you're right there. And. Um, soul boy why have you got to sell Salah? they were going to spend 150 million on casino i totally agree with you there soul boy i really to 110 percent agree with you i really did most sellers are most he came on today you know don't forget you know he only come back he's only come back from india and then he came, went on against Prague, did all right against Prague, scored a goal, which should have been given, by the way. I don't Where was he offside? You see the lines for it? Oh, blimey. You know, after the, uh, after the, yeah, no one was interfering with play. That was absolutely ridiculous. <coughs> and, uh, you know, he came, he did all right today, put a fantastic ball for Diaz. Diaz was it on, should have scored. 
Should have got us on target, never mind, score. Um Drunk the old Wales is watching Liverpool and buying Liverpool merchandise. Yes, that's right. You're so right. Credit goes to Scouting Network, not owners. We spend on seat choices, but they pay off. That's a cracking thing, man. I hope any of our American subscribers or, well, you, you know, don't think that I'm having a go at FSG because they're American, because I'm not. If FSG came from out of Mongolia, it'd still, they'd still get on me nerves, you know what I mean? I don't care where they come from. It's got nothing to do with them being American and everything to do with them being tight. Well, as uh, Anthony Ross says, John W. Henry's wife's breast have had more transfer spends than our club. And uh, the, the drunk says, Salad deserves a statue along with club. People are forgetting that he's breaking all kinds of records. Mo Salah. And he's still our leading goal scorer. Got more assist. Has he got more assist than that? And don't forget, he's been out for ages. He's been out from the beginning of January. It's a long time. A lot of games. Just think about it. Just think about it. And no That's one's, just... you know, yeah, we'll celebrate. Oh, I'd just like to see Mo play in the Champions League for Liverpool one more time. That's what I'd like to see, if I'm honest. But like I said, simultaneously, I'd also enjoy the cash if we could get the cash because we ain't got no cash. We never have no cash. Now, as you know, when people come on late, right, and it's, it's friends of mine's, yay. He says, why has an end zone not been mentioned? Absolutely superb today, 100%. We mentioned them before when we started, didn't we? Enzo, the warrior. Mm. It's great, Enzo. And the drunk says, Enzo seems to get a bit tired in the second half. He said that he was our best player on the field in the first half, but tired. Yeah, he's been playing loads of games. And this is where Arsenal come in, you know. Arsenal have been playing the same team. And they've been very lucky with their injuries, haven't they? They haven't hardly had any injuries. And that's where they, they could take the toll. But even if a, a couple of them get injured, you'll see the level drop, if you know what I mean. So therefore... If the level, you know, is still there with bringing in, they're still playing the same 11 every week. The level of intensity for them will drop because they become more and more tired. Just like Liverpool. Remember, season before last, going after the quads, we were tired and we were playing that many games. Who's your Arsenal have missed most? One of their centre halves or one of their forwards. I reckon it'd be one of their centre halves if Saliba or Gabriel were to be out for even just a couple of games, mate. If they missed, say, like three Premier League games, either Saliba or Gabriel, then we'd see. There's K Mac, he wants to come on. I, I, I can't send him the link. I don't do things like that. Sorry there, K Mac. I'm awfully sorry. But that's what he says anyway. He said it five minutes ago. Can he come on? Is he on I X? Having a clue. Is he on X? JK, I'll send you the clue. And there. Uh, JC is uh, FFP. We can't go out like that. We've spent what we needed to and competed year in, year out. We've took them to the wire year in, year out. And uh, Alfie Ross says, agree, Lee, 100%. Now we haven't got 150 to 200 million budgets each summer. Instead, 
it's uh, our same Wenger model, but the model when he is on his way out, buy them between 20 and 24 for potential reasons. Richard Hutchinson, FSG owners not good enough in investment into the squad and spending money. So yeah, they're coming back to you there. I've said it time and again, we're not asking the earth, we're not asking for Man City levels of cash to be ploughed in, we're asking for one or two players, big players, that we don't have to sell first to buy. Well, Stay says, um, careful what you wish for. We have a solid club, no big debt, and new stands plus top of the league with no legal sickle hanging over us. And Michael Edwards is getting his dinner money, isn't he? Like he's going to Subway, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, and that uh, love from Napoli is exactly like Diaz, in my opinion, says realism, Jarad. And uh, I'm feeling, oh, this Richard's used being linked with Edwards is an interesting link, but a small note of caution, he is used to working within tight refines of a budget. Where's our billionaire sugar daddy? This is the says the Anfield Raw. Yeah. And uh, Neil Broderick, Elliot was a great, well, was great and formed a good partnership with the young right back. Yep. Absolutely. Wow. I was surprised with the subs taught Nunes and Saboslo were decent. Thank you, Neil. Neil goes to the uh, game, by the way. He's there, he's there today. Big up, lads. I love this channel. See, psychedelic show, showling. His, his real name is Chuck Norris. And uh, I'm confused with the team. Uh, I'm, I'm confused why the team is smiling when they have money against, say, the top six, apart from Billy. And we expect to win the league. That's what the psycho, psychedelic says. Um, I'm not late. I typed that ages ago. Says, yeah. <laughs> I don't blame me. I was making myself a cup of tea. Yeah. City ran out of steam, says Neil brother. With 30 minutes ago, we seemed to get stronger. The performance was that good. You could have five ma of the map. That's a good shout. The Anfield Raw. Oh, one thing's for sure: Arsenal couldn't give a city couldn't give City a game with 12 first team players missing. Bloody pretenders to our crown. Says the Anfield Raw. Oh. That's a fact. How many other teams? And that includes City, by the way. With the injuries we've had and all those players out. How do you think they would have gone on? Do you think they'd be there, you know, there or thereabouts at the top of the league? Fighting, mm -hmm. you know, in, in the top three with a couple of points, uh, well, one point separating us. JK. For me, Arsenal wouldn't be able to handle it when you look at their squad. Um, yeah. City... Last season, Gundogan left. Uh, they bought some guys in Kovacic, uh, Nunes, is it? Um, out of the three, I think we would handle it the best, and I think we've handled it the best. Um, yeah, and then City, and then Arsenal. Arsenal would be nowhere near to even top four if they had the injuries we've had. No way. You no. know, they've had sort of a fit squad most games. I think Jesus is the only one guy missing. Um but all in all, like Saka's always fit, even though he plays too many games. They say Martinelli's always playing, Odegaard's always playing. Defensively, Saliba and the other guy next to him, they've always been there as the main two centre backs. So, look, we had Kanate missing today, you know? It didn't really make no difference, really, because I think Konza did okay. But yeah, Arsenal would be nowhere near top four if they were in our position. And there's my daughter. Hello everyone, says Francine. Hi Francine. Bless her, Francine. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, let's feel us yes to say. Um, as the cliche goes, it was a game of two arms during the mm-hmm. first. Be happy with a draw. Second half, gutted. We never won. Yep. So there's your juxtaposition again, isn't it? You know, it, it's surprising how much you know our fans. You know, we agree and we disagree on some of the uh, the issues. But I think that's a good show by Francine. You know, she says it's uh, a game of two halves, and it was. But I thought we were. Uh, you know the first the first what 20 minutes would you say uh you know we were a i don't know 15 minutes say we were a bit iffy then we came more and more into it that's what i said at the beginning of the year pod and then they scored that mad goal you know from the corner and then when we came out second i thought we were playing I thought it was against the runner play, in all honesty. At that time, that goal went in. Because we were superb. And then we came yeah. more and more into it. The second half kicked off, and bang, right away, we were at down their throats. And we got that penalty. And unfortunately, we should have had a second penalty. But we didn't. And as uh, people kept saying, you know, we missed... And Lucio, you know, he missed uh, a couple of, shall we say, easy chances. And then the substitutions, you know, why bring Gapko on? And I know that, I think it was uh, Lee who said that, you know, he was taken off as precaution. This, this game, we could have won that game. This is just me, by the way. We could have won that game if the Mariners would have stayed on. Yeah, because we played with ten men, with mm-hmm. and that's the way I look at it. Yeah, I think it was the wrong decision probably to take Nuno, <laughs> but I can see why he did because he's been injured and he crashed into the post really badly. I don't think that. Well, I hope it, because I was going to say I said that about Canate. I thought he'd play today, you know, because we thought he'd be all right. So I hope I'm not saying that about Nunes, how banging into the post didn't do him, but it might have. He might have got a bad bruised ribbon that like, so maybe that's why he came off. But personally, as I kept him on. Yeah, well, and also, and also, Frank, how many, t- how often do you ever see us play kicking towards the cop cop in the first half? You would think that we'd be better in the first half kicking towards the cop, but we wasn't. We were better second half not playing against the cop. Yeah. Uh, City chose the sides, yeah, from the toss. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they knew. That was a ta- that's a typical Pep Guardiola tactic, that one. Let them face the cop first off. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've got a new uh, look at it, uh, lads here. Roll me one, Kenobi. Can- 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 <laughs> what a name. Hi, Carlo, mate. Oh, that's brilliant. That is Carlo, know? isn't it, in that picture? Well, I don't know. First time I've seen, I've seen him on no, there. No, 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 he's done Carlo and Ancelotti, that to me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, roll me one, Kenobi. Yeah, he's on uh, 12 show. Nice to see you, man. Well, Afran Shane says, uh, I don't know what Gapco does. He offers nothing to the squad. And that's from my daughter. No one wants to say it. <laughs> yeah, I'll say it again. Um, Francine, if you were to come on at the beginning, or even like uh, a, a third through or halfway through, you would have heard them talking about Capco. Yeah. Because Lee, Daryl, and JK think that, that he's absolutely brilliant. And it's his uh, pink shoes that he doesn't play well in. He just Very needs good. to clip his heels together, doesn't he? Just needs to clip yeah. his heels together, doesn't he? And get a dog called Toto. <laughs> yeah. The, only, the only good thing... Uh, the only good thing about him today was his new haircut. That's it. Yeah. I thought... I've seen the new hairstyle. I thought, okay, 
New gut go today. <laughs> yeah. Why didn't he <laughs> Same shoot? Old. Why did he pass to Salah? I just still don't, I won't understand that. He had a chance just to shoot. Yeah. Just... yeah. And um Jay Shay, is that a shake and Elliot shot for Charlie? I thought Elliot was good today. Yeah, he was. Neil brother, City are used to bringing the ball to the halfway line without challenge week in, week out. Because and they couldn't handle, handle our press. I've never seen their keeper launch the ball that many times. Their old game plan went out the window and couldn't handle us in midfield. It's very rare they take off De Bruyne. <laughs> Facts. Is it just me or does um, De Bruyne remind anybody else of the Milky Bar kid just without glasses? He don't half look like the Milky Bar kid from the Mad Birch years ago. Remember, where he's have like a cowboy outfit on and that, and he's have what he look like to Bruyne with glasses. The Milky Bar kid, isn't he? And uh, roll me one, Kenobi says you guys have, have a quality right back on your hands with Bradley. So he's not a red, is he? Does he? Does anyone know who he supports? Is he a red or what? Can anyone it's tell me if you know the lad? Um, I'm not sure who you he's got. You quality on your hands because he, he would have said if he's a red. Our. We have a quality right back on our hands. Yeah. I think he's an Everton fan. Uh, you can tell us in the chat. He's a what? He's an Everton fan. He's <laughs> in the chat if he wants. <laughs> Real Madrid, maybe. Real Madrid. Real Madrid, yeah, supports. Um, I said the same that uh, that JK of Nunes was on. He's about a shot and pass to Salah. Exactly. What do you think of the offside goal? By the way, he scores an offside goal. Remember, no one's mentioned that. That yeah, was lovely, yeah. lovely play. So yeah. again, remember when I've been saying the last few pods. I'm talking the last what, six pods that Nunes has learnt his lesson about keeping the line and not running offside. Today he made up for it, didn't he? Getting caught offside numerous of the times. Oh, I don't know, I'll mention it like that. It's okay. Yeah, so, we're, yeah, yeah, you're right, Frankie. Definitely. Yeah. It was, it was brilliant. The one that was offside. He was just—he didn't need to go that early, did he? But it was brilliant that goal. And the Anfield Raw says, uh, "Don't forget these two lads go the game." Anfield Raw and Neil Brother, great point, Neil Brother. They literally sat back eighty percent of the match, and they did. They were all on. They were all on for what, for what it was worth. That was vital to them that draw. And they were older and on and older and on. So I want to out there. Uh, I don't know whether they've uh, men mentioned who's their man of the match. Can I ask you uh, who, who is your man of the match? I'm asking the, uh, the chat. We've mentioned uh, who are man of the match. Who did you say, uh, JK? Because I, I was out and I like, making a cup of tea. Uh, there was a few who I thought were man of the match. I would go for Virgil as one, Diaz and Endo, I think, and even McAllister. So, um, all in all, good team performance. I think the whole team played well. Absolutely. And even McAllister, the way you said that, and even McAllister. Well, McAllister <laughs> was my man of the match. Uh, he was uh, by far my man. But Virgil played brilliant. Young Quanshaw played brilliant. Bradley played brilliant. Joe, you know, he, he had an indifferent game at right back. But he stood his ground, if you know what I mean. Then you have the midfield. Then you have the forwards. As you said about Diaz, Diaz terrifies. He really does. He terrifies defences. He's all over the place. He runs at them. He's so direct. 
So you've got like you know when when most of it you know I mean like a hundred percent fit. When he's at hundred percent fit, you'll have three players there running at defenses with speed: Salah, Nunes, and Diaz. And you'll have a decent midfield as well. Not a decent, but an excellent midfield behind. Yeah. Him. And then. Yeah. Uh, when everybody's fit in the back four, and this is the running boys, this is the running, and they'll all be fit. The only uh, player who'll be missing is Jota, but he's uh, he's coming back, isn't he? I he's, think you can see. I think. In Sorry, terms, God. In terms of the missing players. If we was have had Jota today, I think he probably would have buried a chance today. He's had a good chance. He scored a few times versus City, Jota. Yeah. I feel if we'd have had him today, whether it be off the bench or from the start, I think we could have we could have um, beat them today. Well, uh, Rolney Van Canobi says, I'm a Real Madrid fan. I found you from Jamie's channel. Saves Ro. Thank you. Madrid. Thank you, amigo. Gracias. What is it? Uh, oh. Gracias. 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 Well, it's nice just Italian. Gracias. I think I think you can safely say, Frank, that we found our penalty taker. That was a well, two penalties. Two out taken, of two. And they were super. The one against yeah. Prague. And uh, tonight, well, today. I knew it was. No, yeah. You know, just What's some players, when, when you just see them, you just know they're going to score that penalty. And for me, McAllister, for some reason, I just know he was going to score today. Okay. Mm. What do you think of it? Uh, I think that's a cracker. Uh, what drunk? What drunk says there? Man City was scared of end up late. Yeah, they didn't, get, they didn't want to get too close to Endo, did they? Any of their players, because they know he's, you know, he's a, he's a great player and a good tackler and that, and um, they knew he'd put his boot in as well, so they were running scared of him, I'd say, drunk, you know? In a sort of way, you know, not 100%, like, but definitely, I can see the validity in that comment, like, they know Endo's tough. And they know not to mess with them. They picked on our other players, didn't they? When they wanted to foul players, like they were picking on other players, but not end on. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, JK? Yep. I think uh, Endo sort of, he battled away the whole game, you know. I think, uh, I wouldn't say that was the best Man City performance I've seen in a long, it wasn't great. I think uh, our midfield sort of grew up grew into the game a bit better second half. Um and with that endo for me, poor he played top. Yeah. He played There's a voice is in the house. Anyway, oh, JK's yeah. in trouble with his wife. <laughs> no no it's not that <laughs> it's a dog yeah, but I'm just saying, like Endo, yeah, top top display second half as well. Even first half, where he had to actually battle more. Right, <laughs> you could tell that was a pat then, JK. I could tell that myself when I heard that. Then it was get out or something like that, or stop it, like you do to a cat or a dog when they're mashing around. Well, they asked the uh, the chat, you know, who their man of the match was. And Anfield Ross says, Enzo, unsung hero for me, wonderful today. Jay, he says, uh, Enzo. Roll me one Kenobi. I, obviously, he's watched the game. Man of the match, Nunes. He had Man City defences on strings. Yeah, that's a good shout, Frank, because if you noticed... They had two hundred million pounds of defenders sat on that bench today, Diaz and Guardiola, and 
he did that for a reason because he knew that them two wouldn't cope with with Nunes today. Good points. Good points. Yeah. Well said. Yeah, I go along with that. And I think maybe she's the drunk. Enzo was less noticeable in the second half because Man City tried to keep the ball away from Enzo. That's <laughs> another good point. Yeah. And Neil says, uh, Diaz for me, he was a nightmare for City. He's a nightmare for any defence who we play. He is a nightmare. Could shout there, Neil. Yeah. Um, the way Diaz left uh, Rodri on the floor was slick, says Roby Wonka. No. <laughs> <laughs> Six foot under the floor. Roll, right? can I just call you Roll? Now you can carry on, Ray. Roll. <laughs> what was you saying, Ray? I was just saying it's a shame Diaz never left Rodri under the floor, under the ground, six foot under. Can't stand Rodri. Another cheating git. He is. He's git with an annoying him. face. Horrible. He's another one that gains and pulls stupid faces at the ref, any and chases the ref. Yeah. 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 I've seen, uh, I've seen some, but, I don't know, was it some, but, no, it was McAllister. This is in the first minute. McAllister just nudges him, you know, he's walking past him in the, in the middle of the park, in the middle of the pitch. Yeah. And that Rodri looks at him like, gives him a, a dirty look, you know, McAllister just looks at us. I can't believe how Kyle Walker was never booked today either. He's disgusting the amount of fouls he makes and gets away with it. Well, Paul Turner says Enzo was brilliant, my man of the match. And that's another one. Because of the first half, Enzo was blowing up Man City, says the drunk. So I think. Um, the soul boy says, um, Enzo, brilliant. Where the hell has he been? Why didn't we get him earlier? Says him. Says the soul of FSG. Boy. It's incredible, isn't it? You know, both Enzo. Watching Enzo live, you see how great he is. He gets it and passes forward. As you know, I'm free of I've said on this pod, pod many, many times, Enzo can find Liverpool players in empty spaces. Whereas lots don't. They just pass to a fella, you know, a player who's being marked. And it's very difficult for them to do anything with the ball. So that's why I said Enzo finds our players in empty spaces. That's why he's good. Yeah. Um, if Liverpool want more quality like Enzo, you guys should be raising the J League. What's the J League? It's Japanese League. Oh, no, we don't want any more of them. You know, we had Minamino, didn't we? Yeah. We had Minamino. Who's that bloke, uh, there's a bloke for Munchen Gladbach, a centre half, who can also play defensive midfield. Oh, yeah, you were interested. And he yeah. costs 12 million, which is FSG money, isn't it? Like, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what, I'd love Kubo from Real Sociedad. Yeah, but he costs non FSG money. He's His quality. Like, proper money, wouldn't he? Like, what? Yeah. Don't spend. Unless we've sold someone. Well, yeah, there's a crack. I look out for all this crap on how wonderful Rodri and Stones are. Well, Enzo and McAllister say, Oh, my beer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. So, by Enzo, brilliant. Where the hell have been? And why didn't we get them earlier? Yes. Yes, and Ian McHale says, I'm scared of Tracy Neville. <laughs> he had to wait three and a half minutes to take the penalty. Great composure. Do you know what? 
I meant to mention that at the beginning, Paul. I really did. Because that was gamesmanship. Mm -hmm. That was gamesmanship. And they must have been selling. He, yeah, there's another thing. Do you think he should have been sent off, by the way? Yes. No. No. Why shouldn't he have been sent? He was the last man, Darren. I, I, I know he was the last man, but you have to think about it. He was... He was in an angle. He wasn't in a goal score position. Yeah, he could have got the ball. Okay, he could have got the ball. That's yeah. why the penalty was given. And he was have been in a, you know, you know, he had to just reel it in. Yeah, I the think the reason why he never saw red because the ball, because he kicked the ball so hard, the ball was going out as well. That's the only reason I didn't think it was a red. Okay, do you, do you agree with uh, Darrell there, uh, JK? Uh, I think if he was in the middle of the goal, different story then. Yeah. 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 I think just because it was a bit on the right-hand side and not in front of goal goal, I think that's why he could have been given red. Uh, I think if our goalie did that away to them, maybe he would have been given red. Uh, a bit reckless yeah. in a weird sort of way. Mm. Um, could, it, could have been red. Could have been red. Shouldn't yeah, but he's paid. He's paid for it, Frank, because he's broke a bone and he's broke a bone in his foot. Has he? Yeah. Well, yeah. No. That, listen to me. He kicked him. That's how he's got a broken uh, bone, and he kicked him. Have a look at it again. Yeah, yeah. If I'm honest, it didn't look that he bad. Um, That's why he should have been. Foul. I mean, the injury. The injury to Edison didn't look that bad. Uh, when I kept looking at the replay, I was like, oh, oh, get up, stop wasting time. But he did go off, so he's he's broken bone, has he? So that means yeah. he's going to be out then, yeah? Yeah. It was an all triatrical for, from uh, the other fella, Nunes. It didn't have to go over because he's yeah. yeah, it's his own fault he's got injured. Yeah, they should have been sent off. It's as simple as that. Because it was violent conduct. Yeah. You can't go around. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm not well, sure. Doku was, Doku was more of a red card. Sorry? Doku's was more of a red card because yeah, it was chest. Yeah. Mane did that. Mane did that to Emma, uh, Edison and got sent off for it. Off, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. When's yeah. the Champions League draw? Friday. Well, I see. Yeah. And as uh, Jay says, Enzo schooling De Bruyne, and he was the uh, schooling, him, wasn't he? Yeah. Brilliant. And Soulboy says the thing is, people gave Enzo stick at first, but look at Fabiano took him ages to get up to speed. That's what we were saying before, Soulboy. We've got a, a, a midfield that's brand new. And all as I wanted at the start of the season was for us to get into the top four, hopefully. I'm saying hopefully. Because I said, these are these have to gel. Bloody hell, you know, they're up there. They're fighting for the league. They're fighting for the league. With these... Uh, New players, this new midfield we've got, fantastic. Uh, TW, Virgil and McAllister, superb leaders. Mm -hmm. yeah. And roll me one can roll me, roll is all right with me. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, that's uh, what I think any player that goes to a new country needs time to get into the swing of things. That's why with the Endo thing, yeah, he played one or two games at the start and people were moaning, you know, and I was like, mm. come on, man. Give him time. Let him settle in. He's got a big family. They have to settle in as well. Um, give each player... Every son, you just give him a chance. You, you give him six months, you give him a, even a season. And like now, Endo has... Even Darwin was getting a lot of stick back in the days, you know? And now, uh, yeah. even Dar like Daryl was saying, like he's probably number one attacker for us now. So look how much he's uh, leaped and bound forward, you know. So 
moaning about players sometimes. Just give them time, you know. Has that noise stopped? Could you hear that noise? Mm -hmm. Oh, never mind. Yeah, it's all right now. Right. Uh, yeah, uh, it was red for me, says uh, Norman. And also, remember Mane got sent off versus City for eight foot on Edison, yet nothing for us. Edison's tackle and docking. And Daz, big up Frank and panel. Hope all is well today. Absolutely. Great to see you there, Daz. Yes, Daz. Great to see you. And Paul Taylor says, Docky thought he was Jackie Chan. And uh, the drunk says, we had more possession in the match than City. Of course we did. Stat-wise, we, we beat them in everything. Yep. All right, boys. I'm going to ask you, right? I'm going to ask you about uh, Thursday, just in case, like, some of the lads on here, you know, don't get back to us. Uh, I'll just say, not who, who, who would you play? I'm not going to ask you that. But who would you rest? Don't forget, the four goals clear, 5 1 up from the. Uh, so, who would you play next Thursday? I, I, I'm sorry, not who would you play next Thursday? Who would you leave out? Who would you rest? Everyone we can. I'd go Kelleher, Bradley, Gomez, Kwanzaa, Simakas, McConnell, Clark. Uh, who's that other one? Who's that other midfielder? Who's a Kez or something? Uh, which one's he? We've got one, haven't we? Kumas. No. Uh, no. There's another one. We've got McConnell. Sorry, sorry and Naomi. Naomi, yeah. Yeah, no. okay, then we'll have Naomi, and then up front we'll have Gakpo through the middle, with, no, Dan's through the middle, Gakpo left, and Kate Gordon right, because we're four goals up. We want uh, Kelleher in, because there's no need to rest Kelleher, uh, a goalie, and Alisson's coming back soon. So play Gomez and Kwanzaa, no way do we want to see, even if Ibu's fit, no way I want to see him or Virgil. I uh, don't want to see Robbo either, rest Robbo, Simakas. And then, like I said, uh, McConnell, Nioni and Clark. And then we've got, like, Gordon, Gaffo, Jay Dance through the middle. Everyone else rests because we can't afford any injuries and they need rest. Well, the point is, uh, what you're saying now, uh, Lee, we, we can't, like, we can't leave out, look, look. We can't leave out too many top players. We can't. But, you know, as you said, you know, we've got to play Joe Gomez. Mm -hmm. We have to play Kwanzaa again. Mm -hmm. Will Conate be fifth for next weekend? I don't know. We've got to give Mo Salah a run out because he needs uh, minutes. He really does. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, Mo can play. Robert, can. Robertson needs minutes as well. That's why he didn't start today. So he needs minutes. But I, I'm happy with uh, Samikas, actually. That left back. I'm happy with him all the time. But if, if he's going to play Robertson, he needs minutes. So we still have the, uh, the senior players. And who's the, who's the one forward that we all know that will be playing? No. Gapo. 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 Yeah, play Gapo, yeah. He'll be the only one. Uh, I think we'll bring in a couple of lads, the likes of that Kumas. If Dan's is fit, I think he'll uh, be playing. I think he'll start. But there will be... Uh, Caution on the bench because they're not a bad side, then you know, mm -hmm. they're not a bad side. And uh, Robbo got roasted, didn't he? In Prague, yeah, there's no point in me going on Thursday now, yeah, he got roasted. Oh, 
Have you got a okay. ticket saddle yeah? Yeah, I wish I wasn't going now. <laughs> <clears throat> It'd be a full house, won't it? Like, or... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we always have a full house up here. Yeah, if it's okay, Frank, if it's okay, Frank, to come on Tuesday because I'll, I'll, I'll be at the game Thursday, so. You're coming on Tuesday, did you say? Yeah, if, I, if I'm allowed to come to, on Tuesday because I'll be at the game on Thursday. Okay, yeah. Okay. Oh. And as Ian Michaela uh, says, yes, yeah, it will be a good game, Daniel. Wouldn't you like to see us score another five? I just want to see decent, some decent players playing. That's it. <laughs> oh, you'll you just want to see Klopp, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I want to see Kloppy. I want him to come in the crowd and give me a massive bear hug before he goes. If I'm perfectly honest, I don't care if we don't score at all on Thursday, as long as we don't concede four. Yeah, as long as we go through. Mm. See the the way I don't want us to be beaten at Anfield though. No, you know I just don't want to see that. The that's way you look at it. Last, uh, last week, uh, while Klopp went for it in the first leg, so it gives him the opportunity to give some guys a rest, the rest Thursday yeah. before the United game next week. So it sort yeah. of worked out. But I think people like Robertson, we need one or two players in there just to steady the ship, you know. So people like Robertson. Any game time, so Gravenberg should be back as well. Yeah, yeah, oh, brilliant, brilliant. Then we want to well, see him, not... don't we? Not for but, the full game, but no. same with Mo and Robbo. But the soul boy says, uh, I think he might give Sally 45 and Robbo and Sabozla. They all need minutes, and this is the this is the point I'm trying to make. This is the point I'm trying to make because they'll be all right against Brighton, won't they? Then do we have the uh, do we have the international break after the? Uh, yeah, and you know it's a one o'clock kickoff. It's not twelve thirty this time. It's one o'clock, so we've got the early kickoff after the international break. Yet another again. one, another yet one, again. yet again. But that's okay uh, because. It's um, we'll play before Arsenal and City, so we'll get our hopefully get our points on the table. Um, yeah, play that game. Was, with it being after the international break, though, I prefer it was three o'clock. It's after yeah. the international break, yet again, we're playing in the morning virtually, you know what I mean? Yes, it, it, it is good though, because we have got a week off now, to, a week from now off to next Sunday, and then we've got a full two weeks. So it's happy days. Yeah, and all the, our team are not really international. You've got Gomez, Bradley, Elliot. They're not going to be like, you know, if it was Trent, uh, Salah, even Salah's not even going to go on uh, international duty. So, no, yeah. Well, there's uh, the drunk. Uh, I think he comes out with a comment. Uh, which we all agree with because I don't want Enzo to play against Prague because I need Enzo fresh for the Man United yeah. game, like I saw. See, I'm I'm a... The problem oh, yeah. for the Brighton game is kicking off early after the international break again. Can Nunes, McAllister and Diaz play? They probably can't, can they? Because they'll be flying back from South America. <clears throat> on a bloody Thursday night or Friday morning and then we're meant to play at the weekend at like one o'clock. At least it's not half twelve, we got an extra half an hour. But then three yeah. lads couldn't play last time. Remember when he yeah. played Callister at City and he was dead, wasn't he? He was dead after about ten minutes and had to come off at half time. Or yeah. something like that. No, you're right there. You're spot on. Uh, do you agree with uh, Paul Turner's comment? He has an Elliot needs a rest. If Tans is available, I will play him with Gapco and give Nunes and Salah one half each. Yeah, they definitely need a rest. Is that a good show? McAllister definitely needs a rest along with Endo as well, though. Yeah. Because he played he against Prague been. last week. Diaz needs a rest. He's played every game, you know. 
Uh-huh. And he's ran every match. He's ran and ran and ran. So maybe, you know, a little rest. A little rest. Oh, no game at all. Maybe if he wouldn't have played, like, you know, the other night against uh, against Prague, he could have uh, scored today. You know, that could have been tiredness. You just don't know when you become lethargic. You, you know, you, you, you're slow in your thinking and moving, if you know what I mean. And uh, Norman, Adrian, no, Adrian. Gomez, Costas, Quonsa, Amalo, Clark, McConnell, Sabozo, Gapko, Tans, and him at the end. Was the last two, is it? And him. <laughs> and, uh, at the end. Why is Amalo a right back, is he? No, centre half. He is. He was the young centre half that was on the bench today. Okay, okay. So we have yeah. Gomez right back there. Yeah. Okay, is it, isn't he an under 18 player? It's about 19. 18, 19. <laughs> JK telling his duck off. <laughs> Did he say F off, JK? Huh? No, he was telling his dog off. <laughs> Sit, yeah, you naughty boy. Sit, you naughty boy. He's a bit of a rascal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I thought you said TK says F off. Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Gakko can play fingers head number one. Says <laughs> drunk Beagle. Poor Gakko. The full 90, say strong. So listen, lads, I'm going to end it here. I'm absolutely shattered. Did you get any sleep last night, by the way? Not a lot. I had a terrible nightmare as well last night. It was horrible. I woke up like, this morning. This horrible nightmare. It was weird, but it was horrible. And it weren't about football, let me tell you that. I text Frank and I said, Frank, I can't, I can't sleep. I'm so nervous. <laughs> Well, the point is, as you say, I, I, I hardly slept. I've been up since uh, quarter six. Quarter to six. So I, I was just lying there, you know, as you do in bed, twiddling my thumbs. And then I went to I'll get a shower. And I never get a shower before Liverpool play. Shower and a shave. So anyway, I, I jumped up to, to have me a shelf up. Had a shower. And then I went, oh, no, I shouldn't have done that. So I didn't get a shave because I'm superstitious. And maybe that's why, because I never got a shave. Just had the shower. That's why we drew. I never got that penalty we uh, should have had. You got up early to watch the Sunday political shows to see if Robert Paston was really dead, didn't you? Or if he's still alive? <laughs> oh, I knew that he's still alive. It, it's there again on Facebook. I was on Facebook yesterday and it was in the top corner. It said something like, um, will we get over his death or something? It's weird, Facebook. I didn't think they'd have anything like that on there saying people are dead. I've seen it yeah. in comment boxes where someone goes, RIP, I don't know, Hulk Hogan or someone who isn't dead or someone that you don't care about anyway. But like the Robert Peston thing on Facebook freaked me out. I, I believed it. I don't think Hulk Hogan's dead. Is Hulk dead? I was just pulling his name out the Oh, I was just pulling his name out Yeah, just any old name, you know what I mean? Well, anyway, Paul Turner says, Great show, Frank. I saw the show on Channel 5. That Susan took a shine to you. Oh, I don't think she did. No, I know why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? I, I, I haven't seen it. I really haven't. I don't know that I, I, I've got one sent through. I uh, sent it, yeah. Uh, yeah, but anyway, I, I, I don't know what was. I, I know that I was 
I know that I was at the PLS, and I know that, you know, by the, uh, facing the, uh, the museum there, the Maritime, and uh, I was in the Bridewell telling the story about uh, Dickens. Well, anyway, I was standing at the, looking over towards the, um, looking over towards the, the Maritime Museum, so he did what they had to do. And uh, I said to them, whatever you do, you know, I can hardly walk. So he went, ah, don't be worrying. So I don't know whether you see me walk because what I did is, you know, we had to turn around, me and that girl, she's only tiny, me and that girl turns around. So I threw my arm around her on, on the shoulder and straight like down. And, you know, I used her as a crutch. Not to walk away. I don't know whether that was shown or what. I just don't know. I don't know. But people were kind, you know, saying seeing you. Seeing you on there, uh, you know, on the show. You were very kind. Well, I was good, mate. I enjoyed it. Oh, you see it as well? Mm, yeah, I watched it myself. Yeah, it was very good. I didn't know you were on. It was only someone that said on here... Um... Thursday, someone said on Thursday that you were on. So I was like, put a uh, put a record on that. I've kept it, mate. I've kept it on my memory, so I can watch it again. Well, what is? Uh, I got a, 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 a I got a phone call uh, when it was on, and it was from one of the producers. They said, "Are you watching this?" And I said, "No." They said, "Why?" I said two things. One, I don't like looking at myself. And the other is um, the communal aerials gone. I can't get any. I can't get terrestrial television. And he went. Oh, he said you were great, and we want you to come back and talk more about Dickens. Because I wrote a play, didn't I? A reflection of Dickens, and uh, it's about the birth of uh, Oliver Twist. But it's the birth of a Liverpool lad that inspired Dickens to write about the birth of Oliver Twist. Did you know that? No, not until you told. I think you told me previously once before, and I was quite, you know, amazed, shocked, and amazed at that. Like, I'm pleased as well that Liverpool well, got another mention there. And oh, uh, is he? I've just been asked to uh, put on the the other play, which is a huge success actually, and that was called um, Echoes of the First World War. How about that? Nice. And tomorrow night on my history show, I think you will enjoy it because I'll be talking about. Let me see if I've got it here. No, I must have put it away. Let's see. I always put things down. I don't know where they are. But anyway, I'll be talking about some uh, very famous lads. And it's about Victoria Cross in the Fifth World War. And there'll be lots on, you know, so that's what I'll be doing tomorrow night. Any shout about um, Dickens' dad being put in debtors' prison, wasn't it? Like, and it took Dickens away from where he was, and he had to go and do some crummy job, didn't he, as a kid? But yeah. he didn't want to do. Oh, DW. Just saying hello, Frank. Fresh from George Galway's moats. Thank you, DW. I, had to, uh, I was doing this pod tonight uh, at the same time as uh, George, so uh, that's why I missed it. That's why I missed it. But if you're interested, I'm doing my yesterday show tomorrow night, DW, is about uh, Victoria Cross holders. I'm looking for me Victoria Cross, actually. I don't know where to, I can't bloody see in here. I can't tell, I don't know where it is. I can't see, and I've got it here somewhere, somewhere. I always have it here. I don't know where it is. 
I'll get it tomorrow when I'll be able to see because I can't bloody see anything in here. You might be sitting on it, Frank. <laughs> no, I'm sitting on my bum, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, mate. And uh, I'll be there, man. He says, Thank you, DW. Really nice. Dorothy Langman. I'm going to blow your mind. Oh, I said that, didn't I? I said that to that woman, yeah? On the show, on the... Um, yeah. On that documentary, yeah? I said I'm going to... That was filmed after... Afterwards, you know. So they changed it around, if you know what I mean. If that's... Um, I'm going to blow your mind because I've done everything inside. Then I had to go outside and uh, just say, you know, oh, I'm going to blow your mind because I was talking about Dickens. I was talking about the docks, what was going on. And uh, they say it's only all fiction is biography, and all biography is fiction. And that's the thing with Dickens, isn't it? Is um, you know, his novels about poverty and that he did actually sort of live that life when his dad was put in debtor's prison and he was sent to work somewhere crummy one he like with a loads of people he didn't want to be. And this is when he was a boy as well. This is before he was a man. He had to go and work somewhere to earn the family money. His dad was in debtor's prison, wasn't he? It was very sad. There was a Dickens one on not long ago with Tom Courtney as the main character. And he got put in debtor's prison. I forget which one it was. Which player? Are you talking, I, I, hang on, Lee. Are you talking about his dad? Yeah, Dickens' his dad, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, there was um, he, every character. Now, don't forget, I'm a specialist on uh, Dickens. Every character that's named in any book is based on a real life character. Did you know that? Mm every character so you know even uh even um what's his name no uh character of what's his bloody name was based on his dad <coughs> based on his dad his own his real life dad and this character and he was a spendthrift. I forget what it was. Oh, I forget his name. Anyway, so boy, Fran, are you still going ahead with the play you had with Jake Abraham? Yeah, I had Jake to um, star in it and to their director. And that's what I just mentioned. So it's uh, a reflection of Dickens. A reflection of Dickens. I can't so, remember which Dickens tale it was, but Tom Courtney was the main character, and it was him. He got sent to debtor's prison, and it drove him insane, the poor guy. You know what I mean? He never recovered. I don't think Dickens' dad ever recovered, did he, from being put in debtor's prison? Mm -hmm. And it drove mm -hmm. him insane, like Tom Courtney's character. It's really yeah. sad, like, really, really sad. But that's what you get with Dickens, isn't it? Like, it's poignant, it's funny, it's, you know, you get a bit of everything in there, don't you? Well, if you ever read our times, there's a, there's a, 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 you get to the fifth chapter, the very first page of the fifth chapter, and you read, and it's called Keynote, and that is describing Liverpool from Everton, from our bushels, you know, he used to buy uh, these Everton mints, they were medicinal. And he used to just sit there and he looked down. Don't forget there was nothing in Everton then. And he used to look down. And what he seen was the Liverpool Leeds Canal. The Mersey. But he also seen people going in and out of the houses. And the way he describes it, the greatest descriptive writer ever. And uh, the way he described it was like... Um, it was like... Uh, uh, you know, robots going in and out, in and out, and they're just going to work. Yeah. And you see the factories, you know, you see the smoke, and he describes the smoke and everything else. And these machines going like this, 
like melancholy elephants and the, the smoke the, you know circling like uh, serpents snakes brilliant and he's describing liverpool as he's looking down from everton <coughs> yeah so i love all that and uh, the drunk says uh, uh i've met a few of the oh hang on it's, 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 it's got something there yeah the drunk says um vase of flowers is a word wordsmith yeah. thank you kindly you know. and uh i've met a few of them say so, you know on the dw uriah heaps are everywhere yes think about that name uriah heap uriah heap look at magwitch look at pip incredible incredible and uh hey McKay, nice one lads for tonight's pod another great show thank you so much nice one, I, wish, I just wish people would subscribe just to get me up there just to get me you're up already up there. At, you're already up there frankly in our eyes yeah but i, I like people to just get uh, that uh I was late, not a stage actor, mm -hmm. because he only acts the goat. <laughs> William Dorothy from Little Dorothy, Tom Courtney. That's what Dorothy's uh, telling you. It's made me sad. It's made me tear up thinking about that. Yeah, look, Dorothy yeah, Langland. She's just uh, answered yet. William Dorothy from Little Dorothy was played by Tom Corton. <coughs> oh, forget it, Lee. No, I heard you, I heard you, mate. I'm sniffling, aren't I? Something's made me sniffle. Well, it's that. You're something. crying, are you, Lee? Yeah. <laughs> don't know why. <laughs> oh, come on, Lee. Well, it's there for me, like, but it's very sad. Life's very sad and full of shit, isn't it? That's life for you. And Tom Courtney played Daniel Quilp in the old Curiosity Shop. Could it be Daniel Quilp in the old Curiosity Shop? Possibly. What a name, Daniel. That was a few years ago. It just saddened me that he never recovered from what happened to him. Well, my favourite Dickens novel, you know, people say, oh, is it there? Uh, is it great expectations because i've done that loads of times in my literature class um, it's hard times and there's a fellow in it by the name of stephen blackpool and it's brilliant the way he has stephen blackpool he's been sent to coventry by his workmates and it wasn't his fault anyway uh, Stephen Blackpool dies. And do you know how he dies? He dies. He falls and falls in a pool of water. Stagnant water. Hence the name Stephen Blackpool. Isn't that brilliant? Yep. Ah. Yeah, right? Yeah, sounds, yeah, sounds. Just a little bit of melancholy hit me. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I'll uh, I'll give you a song if you want. You know, you know, to make it all the more, um, you know, Larry Nelson. You know, he sang a very powerful, sad song. I can't give any more. Did you ever? That's a that? great song. Yeah. I that one, I like everyone's talking, but I don't like it um, without you. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah. yeah, well, that's it, you see. So, if you want me to sing it and you can all join in the chorus, you know, it'll be, be okay. Yeah, I'll sing. <laughs> Donald's looking at me like that. Go. I've got a song, <laughs> I've got a song for you guys. What is it? All around the fields, I love your road. <laughs> 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 oh, 
a GW series, yeah, giant in a puddle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's it. Lads, thank so, you so much for everything tonight. Thank, thank you, you Frank. And uh, Tuesday, you know, fifth of Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. And don't forget. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, to be honest, I won't be having a one on Thursday. I'll be having us on Friday instead. Mm -hmm. right? Eight o'clock kickoff in it first, you say. Oh yeah, look, Pete from a uh, bad finger wrote that, Frank. For Ali Nilsson, really? I didn't know that. He was a uh, big mate with John Lennon, wasn't he, Ali Nilsson? Yeah. Yeah, he was. And one of them Smother Brothers. The Smother Brothers. You know, they, they were a comedy act. Yeah. Uh. Mark Simon's got like me droogies from sunny Gibraltar. Get back, get back to Gibraltar. Uh, to Spain. Cheers, Mark. All them Spanish would be coming for me. Yeah, it always makes me laugh, that droogies for friends. Did you know that most of um, the, the, the Nadsat slang from Clockwork Orange was uh, Slavic or a little bit of it was Gypsy, but nearly all of it's Slavic, Russian. All them words like like Drew, Russian for friend. It's um, what you call it, um, bastardized English or whatever you call it. What's the name? What's the um, he messes around with it like the spelling's different, like horror show. When Alex says something's real horror show, that's Russian. It's in Russian, it's oro show, it's O R O S H O, uh, and that means good. So, we uh, Oh, did you know um, he was from uh, Moss Side as well? Anthony Burgess, who wrote Clockwork Orange, amongst other no. things. He did a good one about um, what's his mush as well from Dublin, um, Finnegan's Wake, and all that. Um, he did one about him as well. Here comes everybody. A, a, a short guy to um, fucking hell, I forgot his name. What's his name, man? Joseph T. Joyce, Joyce, James Joyce. That's who it is. James Joyce. I'm reading that at the moment. Josephine T. Yeah, uh, she's written something about Richard the Third and the princess who died in the town. That was Richard the Third. That decision not to give us a pen at the end, wasn't it? That was a 24 car float of that one, eh? Right, so uh, entertainers as always, Frank, top of the league pod. Oh, thank you. That's what I'm reading, Frank. <laughs> so, so nice. Well, so my friend, uh, yeah, I'll be doing that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Any Fletcher and Dickens, I'll be doing that anyway. So it will be going on this year sometime. Hopefully in St. George's Hall concert room where Dickens used to give us penny readings. Well, look, so, if you're going to smother any brothers, let's hope it's the Neville brothers. Let's smother them, yes? Yeah. We leave Tracy alone because I want Tracy. I know she's going to answer me calls one day, Tracy Neville. But we will smother Gary and Phil like... And it won't be sinister, it'll just be funny. We'll just sit on them or something and smother them out. Is he, is he the hockey player? Something like that, yeah. I think she manages a hockey team or something, in it? Oh. Well, anyway, uh, we'll finish on this. And it's a good one from... Uh, it's a good one from Norman. I will finish by saying I am proud of our team today. We are down to the bare bones and we battered them second off. Cheating cost us. Well said, Norman. That's a well said, though, isn't it? From Ian McHale, I remember Bernie Winters having, a, having to do Dick Deterred on Give Us a Clue. <coughs> 
Dixie Chairs. That's one of my favourite Dustin Hoffman performances, if not my favourite. It's probably the favourite um, Dustin Hoffman performances, uh, Midnight Cowboy, as Ratso Rizzo. You know what he said? His dad died from doing the boot polish. He used to polish people's boots, his dad, and he died from the fumes off it. And Ratso was like, no way, I'm going out like that. And don't be, don't be saying any more sad ones, because you'll end up crying again, and people might come on very late and go, Lee's crying, Carl is uh, making him cry there. <laughs> he was like that as a person, wasn't he, um, Nielsen? He, he drank himself to death like so many artists, like so many... Harry Nielsen, yeah, yeah. Harry Nielsen, yeah, yeah. So many artists do, don't they? Whether they be writers like Hemingway or Dostoevsky, so many writers and artists drink themselves to death, don't they, for some reason? At, le at least well, we can go to bed smiling tonight, boys. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I was you, you just mentioned there, uh, Hemingway. He has a, a, a granddaughter named Margot Hemingway. Yeah. And she, uh, she, you know, took her own life. And I've just let our Francine phone me today. And she just told me about uh, a dear girl who I know very well. And uh, she took her own life. And she's beautiful. I mean, it shocked me. It shocked me. Supposedly, you are taking your own life if you do that to yourself, to yourself to death. Well, Hemingway circumvented that end by blowing his own head off, didn't he? But he was halfway there anyway, like to start with, wasn't he? Any old Zion is a great book by Burgess about a young Welsh boy who finds the sword of Excalibur. In a field stuck in a boulder, but not long, brilliant book, he says, and says Mark Simons. Uh, Norman says, I'm reading Kennedy detail book. The family had suffered some terrible debts. Yes. Yes. Uh, brilliant Midnight Cowboy acting and soundtrack. A great thing, says Dorothy. And uh, Tell you what, Daryl, you watch Babe Station and you will go to bed happy. Oh, yeah, I'll watch it later. I'll, I'll send Frank, Frank the link. <laughs> right. That's it now. All right, so we'll all go to bed. We'll all wake up tomorrow, Monday, a new week. A new week. I'll see you all tomorrow night. If not, uh, I'll see you on Tuesday night. Uh, and don't forget, I'm having a film and TV review Thursday morning. Is that okay? Can, bro. Thursday morning. Thank you, JK. Can. Have a good day. Uh, evening, guys. Thank you. Good night, night JK, bro. Best, bro. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you, Lee. Night, Frankie. And and to all the chat out there, thank you so much. If you haven't subscribed, just please subscribe to the channel as uh, we all say get the algorithm up there I suppose you know mate. Yeah. night Lee oh. nice everyone see you later it's cool bro we got a 1-1 today we didn't lose it's okay yes well that's it isn't it, that's it. I feel I feel really sorry for him Lee he's really upset man oh we're all upset. No one can be more upset than me, but you've got to fight through. Three yeah. things. Okay. Have a good See night, you. Frank. Ah, uh, and you, and you, uh, Daryl, and you, JK, and Lee, and everyone on there. On the chat. Thanks for the yeah. chat as well. Yeah, oh, chat. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks very much. Bye, guys. Shiva the Ciao, Bella.